The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. Death Valley has been the center of Clemson Tiger football tradition, but for opponents, it has brought a tradition of turmoil and defeat for many who have walked in its path. The Duke Blue Devils have fought numerous battles in the Valley, but it's been 17 years since they've marched out with a victory. Today, the Tigers return home, and after an intense bus ride to the top of the hill, they'll rub the rock of magic and sprint down into the Valley to begin another Clemson football adventure. Now only one question remains. Who will fall in the Valley of Death? And who will walk in the Valley of the Sun? Sit back and hold on tight as Clemson and Duke face off in an ACC Conference war. of plenty, part of the crowd of 70,000 plus that'll watch today's ACC matchup. A mix of backdrop of beautiful color here in the upstate of South Carolina. As today, live from Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, Jefferson Potted Sports presents the ACC Game of the Week. The Duke Blue Devils take on the Clemson Tigers. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin along with Coach Bill Dooley. Well, Coach Dooley, the importance of this game for Clemson, very, very important if they have hopes on postseason. Well, it's a must win. You know, you've got to win this one. If you don't, you're going into North Carolina and South Carolina having to win both of those to qualify for a bowl. So this is as big as they come right here against the Blue Devils. Now, Duke comes in here at 2-6, and six, and I don't know what a coach does to motivate his team. You've been in that situation. What do you do to carry a team through its last three? Well, grade? say, fellas, we're playing for pride. This is a big ball game for us. We've got something to gain to move up to the next thing. Hey, they might be looking at North Carolina, so let's get this one. Well, Clemson looks at their big play people to pull them out of jams continually this season, and Neilon Green, he's the all-time offensive leader at Clemson, throw more touchdowns than anybody else, and the man who has a chance to be the first 1,000-yard receiver in Clemson history, Tony Horn, is often at the other end of his passes. Last week was a classic leak week for Neilon Green to help Clemson out of a tough spot. Well, there's no doubt about it. If Priester is not at full speed today, they're going to call on Neilon again going to Tony Horn. Neilon Green had an outstanding game last week. He could pull that ball down and run it as well as throw it. Now, Clem Clemson will face a Duke team that's 2-6, and six, and Fred Goldsmith has decided to go with Spencer Romine today, a quarterback. Why did he make that decision? Well, he's such an outstanding option quarterback. They feel like they've got to get the trap and the trap option going, and Romaine is the man to do it. Well, Spencer Romine on the spot this afternoon. The Duke Blue Devils trying to do something they haven't done since 1980, and that's beat the Clemson Tigers here at Death Valley. More from Clemson right after this. Today's ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Nations Bank, by Pepsi, Generation Next, by Mazda. Experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. The tradition at Clemson of running down the hill started in 1942. They brought the players over by bus because it was the fastest way to get them from the field house. They touched Frank Howard's rock, a tradition they began in 1967. And now the festivities can begin as Clemson and Duke square off in Death Valley. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Jim Noble, with more on this matchup. Thank you very much, Steve. When the Clemson Tigers run down that hill, it's been called the most exciting 25 seconds in all of college football. But truth be told, the next three hours will be pivotal for Clemson's bowl hopes. As you said, they've got to win two out of three with North Carolina, then South Carolina after that one. This one, we just got to have. As for the Duke Blue Devils, this is a team that comes in here with a real chip on his shoulder. The Devils think they're much better than their 2-6 and six record indicates. They would like nothing better than to catch that proverbial tiger by the tail. So the scene is set. Clemson hosting Duke here at Death Valley. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this from upstate South Carolina. 
sun is out on a beautiful day here in Clemson, South Carolina, as the Tigers and the Blue Devils go at it. In his fourth season as head coach, Fred Goldsmith. And, of course, across the way, it'll be Tommy West, his fourth season also as head man of the Clemson Tigers. But the grass has been a little bit greener for Tommy West in his four years here. Coach Bill Dooley, what are your keys to this game, especially for Clemson? What do they have to come out and do? Well, I think Clemson has to have a balanced offense. You know, they always depend on winning the turnover war and being able to run the football. But I think Duke is going to try to force them to throw the football. And, of course, Neil Orn Green and Tony Horn has done a good job of that. Now, for Duke, I believe they've got to establish the option game. They've got to run up in there, have a balanced offense, run up in there with the fullback, come out with the option play. If they can force Clemson up, then they'll be able to throw it to Montgomery and Corey Thomas, their outstanding receivers. When we take a look at the starting lineups a little bit later on here in this first quarter, we'll see that Clemson has made some adjustments anticipating exactly what Coach Dooley's been talking about, thinking that they might possibly throw early going with a three-wide receiver set. Here's David Richardson out of Clemson. He was outstanding last week with field goals. Less than shining on point afters, but as far as kickoffs are concerned, he puts his signature, sending Dwayne Epperson back into the end zone, about seven yards deep, and that is his 15th touchback this year. Let's take a look at the quarterback now for the Duke Blue Devils coming out. It is Spencer Romine, and he is a freshman out of Cullman, Alabama. 26 out of 50, 52% for the Duke Blue Devils. You'll see him there. He quarterback the two wins that Duke had back-to-back -back against the two service academies, Army and Navy. And he'll bring them out this afternoon. You see three touchdown passes and three interceptions. First and ten, and Duke will open up after the touchback at their own 20-yard line. Romine with the play action, and he's going upstairs early, and he wants Corey Thomas. And Thomas almost made the catch. Michael Allen covering on the play, but an interesting call on first and ten as we look at the Duke offense. Led by Romine out of the uh, quarterback position, and there you see Corey Thomas. He started all 42 games out of Wilson, North Carolina. Wilkes and Marshall's a setback. Montgomery's a good receiver. Hodrick, an excellent tight end. Up front, it's a pretty good line, anchored by fifth-year senior John Gordon. Patrick Manley is also back. Friedman, Melita is a veteran, along with Austin Smithwick. Second down and 10 now. Duke at their own 20 once again. Romine. Goes to the fullback for the first time through on the option. Straight ahead, and that is going to be Lay Marshall. Marshall, averaging 6.8 a carry. Here's the Tigers' defense, and this is a guy we'll talk about all afternoon. That is Anthony Simmons, and he's just a junior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Clanton, White, and Bromel up front. Raheem Abdullah is the outside linebacker to watch. Antoine Edwards moves from safety to cornerback for the second straight week with Allen Carswell and DeMarco Fox. Third down, and about nine to go after the gain of one. Romine rolling left, throws with a right, and the pass is complete to Scotty Montgomery, and Montgomery's pushed out of bounds at the 33-yard line. It's a gain of 12. Carswell was the one who ran him out, but it's a first down for the Duke Blue Devils. Well, Scotty Montgomery's been an outstanding receiver. Let's take a look here. All right, here's Romine coming out. And there's Scotty Montgomery wide open. There was no one even close to him. Carswell came up the strong safety to make the stop after they get the first down. Always nice to convert those long third downs to first. And they're at first and 10 at the 33. Octavius Wilkes and Lay Marshall and back to Spencer Roman. That's an almost jump, and this is Wilkes. And Wilkes tries to go in tough as he gets to the 35-yard line. And Mon Wilkes, the man who picked him up. Wilkes. Mon Wilson out of Tupelo, Mississippi, fifth-year senior, had a rare infection at the age of three years old that made his heart stop. He's been stopping hearts ever since of other people from that inside linebacker position. Reggie Herring fondly calls him a blue-collar linebacker. Second down and eight. is on Romine and he's in trouble. Mon Wilson is there with Tony Clanton. Well, that was just excellent pressure put on. That was, uh, there's Mr. Anthony Simmons again coming in, number 41. And let's take a look at it here. There's 41 coming in, Anthony Simmons. And boy, is he around that football. Every time you look up, you'll see. Buckus Award nominee, as you see it from field level. Well, he just came through clean. That's one thing the Clemson defense can do is they can put pressure on that passer. 
Fifth play of the drive, and it's a third and long. Third and about 12. Hand off to the fullback, Lay Marshall. Looked like there was an opening, but uh, tripping him up is Raymond White. And it's going to bring up a punting situation as they get it out to the 35-yard line. So a good defensive series for the Clemson Tigers. Tony Horn is back to receive the kick. Uh, Brian Morton, who is a true freshman from Winter Haven, Florida. 41-4 on his average, and he's boomed along one of 58. He'll have a slight breeze in his face, blowing out of the west throughout the afternoon. Low snap, he gets it out of there. Horn will return at the 27. Horn averaging nine a return, gets about that out over the 35-yard line. It's a 37-yard punt. There's a flag thrown in after the play. We'll see what the flag is going to show us here. Well, it appeared that uh, they had piled on Tony Horn after he uh, was stopped and was down, and the Duke player just came in. A dead ball, personal foul, 15 yards. So that adds some mileage near midfield now. That's where Clemson will open up first and 10. No score. Clemson getting its first look at the football offensively this afternoon. When we come back to Memorial State. Log on to www.clemsontigers.com and save on Clemson merchandise when you use your Nation's Bank credit card at South Carolina J.C. Penney and J.B. White stores. Tommy West looks on. Neilon Green to bring them out as he'll get under center, setting six records last week. He's the all-time offensive leader, all-time TD pass leader with 30, most completions in a season, most completions in a career, and we're only halfway through. First and 10 at the 49 of Duke. And with the ball, this is going to be Terry Witherspoon. Witherspoon starts out of the backfield in place of Raymond Priester, who we expect to play today as we set the offense after the Lamar Grant tackle. Lamont Hall playing today at fullback, paired with Raymond Priester and Terry Witherspoon. Wofford, Horn, and Lawyer are the receivers. For the offensive line, it's Jim Bundren, 43 straight starts, along with Glenn Rountree. Alan Postel, Jason Gamble, and Corey Halsey coming off an injury suffered in the Wake Forest game. Gain of six, brings up four, and brings Witherspoon to the line again where he's going to be close to another first down for the Clemson Tigers. Ryan Stallmeyer in on the tackle as we look at the Duke defense. Chris Combs, he's been outstanding in his sophomore season. Eric Scanlon at nose, Chris Ruzik, the linebackers behind them inside. Lewis and Ibunue was outstanding. Tawambi settles, has broken up more passes than anybody. Lamar Grant, Darius Clark sat out last week's game, and Eric Jones will complete the backfield. It's going to be close enough to a measurement. While they take the measurement, Coach, why Lamar Hall at fullback for Clemson? Well, I think there was two reasons. You probably observed number 82 coming out and make an outstanding block. I think that gives them better blocking for an eye tailback. Number two, I think Weatherspoon is better back at tailback when Priest is out of there, so they needed someone to block. Weatherspoon's normally the fullback, so I think it gives them a little bit more blocking ability in the eye formation. Third and the length of a credit card for first down for Neilon Green and the Tigers. No score. Clemson's first time with the football. Terry Weatherspoon up over the pile and in for the first down. And Clemson will keep that move going on. Staying primarily on the ground where last week they came out throwing a little bit and then Raymond Priester twisted the ankle and that forced Neilon Green to throw even more. And he did just that in the second half. His first connection on the third play of the half to Tony Horn went for a touchdown. Hall and Witherspoon are back in the backfield now. As you look at Witherspoon from Monroe, North Carolina. He's a sophomore. He's rushed for two touchdowns this season. At the Duke 39, and the Blue Devils are showing blitz. Play action pass and a flag on the play. The pass complete to Tony Horn, but it'll be blown dead as it'll be a procedure penalty coming up on Clemson. Well, Clemson jumped a little too soon. Duke was uh, all up there. They were having an all-out blitz. Ball. Ball start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll still replay the same day. Well, let's take a look at it. You can see Clemson jump. But Duke had an all-out blitz. They were selling out with eight coming at uh, Nelon Green at quarterback. And matter of fact, those two leading hats were the hats 
of linebackers. They weren't of linemen. They were there in the neutral zone. Ron Cherry, our referee this afternoon here at Memorial Stadium. It's going to be first down and 15, and now Sam Zanders comes into the backfield with Witherspoon. Ball out of there, next to the receiver in. Here's Green on the option, and he'll take it himself. Pays for a little bit. Stallmeyer erupts him up there along with Jones and Ibunawe. Chike Ibunawe out of Dallas, Texas, leading tackler in the ACC. It's a gain on the play of about five yards. Well, let's take a look at it. There's a good uh, coming down the line, Nelon Green, and there's Chichi Ibunawe along with Ryan Stallmeyer making that uh, tackle. So it's going to be second down and about nine. Ball at the 38-yard line. G.K. Ubunawe. Standing linebacker for the Blue Devils who are showing blitz again. This time they kind of fold it inside to Xanders. And again, we've got possible procedure penalty here against Clemson. And uh, those linebackers coming in, Bill, are presenting a problem to Clemson offensively. I think it's disconcerting to the Clemson offense. They go up and they're faking, and then they come back out, and then they come and talking to Coach Bobby Trotty. False start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay the down. Well, they keep uh, mixing it up whether they're going to blitz or whether they're going to fake the blitz, and this is the strategy of the Duke defense, and I think it's really affecting the Clemson offensive football team. Flag has gained the most yards this afternoon, 25, split 15 and 10. Out of the shotgun on second and 14. Elon Green has some time. The pass is complete. And that is Brian Wofford moving down inside the 15-yard line, knocked out at the 12. Eric Jones on the tackle. Uh, much like their touchdown play a week ago to Tony Horn, something designed for short yardage, picks up 33. Well, that was just great concentration on the football. Let's take a look at it. Here's Nealon Green back. He finds number 25, Brian Warford. But Warford has great concentration on that ball, pulling it in, and just outruns the defense out to the corner. His 21st catch of the year sets Clemson up first and 10. Ball is just on the 10-yard line. And they can get a first down inside the one, it appears. Handoff goes to Witherspoon. He slices his way to the seven. And Kendrell Knight was there on the tack along with Chike Ibunawe. As you look at Terry Witherspoon coming away from that after a three-yard game. Well, Witherspoon had a chance if he hadn't a trip to taking that ball on to the end zone. But Chike Ibunawe came over from his linebacker position and then keeps adding to that uh, tackle them out. Uh, 104 coming into this ball game, and he's made about two or three stops already. Four carries on the day for Terry Witherspoon and 14 yards. Hall takes his place at linebacker. Seth in motion, but it's Witherspoon on the carry, and he gets inside the five to about the three. If Bunaway tripped him up and was helped out on the play that time by Kevin Lewis. Well, let's take a look at it, but here's Witherspoon, number 26, and there's Hall, number 82, making a good block. G.K. Abunaway, good stop by G.K., and like I say, every time you look up, there's G.K. around that football. Abunaway made more tackles than anybody else. It's good news, and then it's bad news. It's good news because he's good enough to make the tackles. It's bad news as he's been on the football field long enough to make those tackles. <laughs> out of the eye, third down, and about five. Witherspoon again picking his way close to the end zone. He gets inside the two. And he's knocked down by Abunaway. And instantly the Clemson crowd says, you go for it. Well, Witherspoon uh, couldn't find the daylight. Let's take, let's take a look at it. Witherspoon operating a tailback. Nealon Green pitches back to him. But the surge of the offensive line was just not good enough. The Duke defense and G.K. Abunaway made the stop so it's going to be about a yard short uh, of the first down be fourth and a yard and they're going to take time out and talk about it we're going to stay here with 736 left to go in this first quarter Duke started this drive seven plays ago at midfield matter of fact the roughing penalty or piling on penalty gave them X in the field position of the 49th this is the ninth play of the drive let's go to the sidelines and Jim Noble Steve, here's the story on Raymond Priester. He looked okay in warm-ups. In fact, the coaches told us that he would probably start. The thing is, 
Kerry Witherspoon looked exceptionally sharp in warm up, so the coaching staff has decided, hey, if we can get the job done with Terry, let's do that. You know they like to hold Raymond out with two big games coming up the next two weeks. Of course, Raymond's already tried to get on the field once. You know he wants to play. His career high, a school record 263 yards rushing, was set against Duke two years ago. Well, you know he wants a piece of these guys. Yes, well, sir. <laughs> he certainly does. But, you know, if you watch number 82, big 82, the tight end that was moved back to the I fullback slot, what an outstanding job he's doing blocking out of that fullback position. I know Raymond Priester would like to be running behind him. There's no doubt about it. He looks more like a fullback than anybody they got on the roster so far this year. And uh, they got to get him reps in the ball game. They threw the ball to him four times last week. And now Clemson's going to send a kicking unit out. David Richardson is out there to kick. Tommy West says, hey, we're going to be down here again, folks. So we'll kick this three, and we'll see what happens. Now, this will be a kick of 18 yards. And this is not as automatic as you think with David Richardson. He's better from long distance. Six out of six so far this season. He hit four against Wake Forest a week ago, but he missed two extra points. Out of the hole to Kevin Laird, the kick is good. And Clemson is on the board. The Clemson Tigers on an 18-yard field goal by David Richardson lead the Duke Blue Devils. 3-0 will return after these messages from your local ACC station. Well, if you got it, flaunt it, especially if your team is leading. Clemson, 3-0 over Duke, and David Richardson, 18-yard field goal, capping the drive. And a key play in that nine-play march started at the 49 of Duke was a 33-yard pass hook up from Elon Green to Brian Walker. Fred Goldsmith was saying to Fred Chatham, hey, if we'd have stopped that play, we might have prevented that field or something to that. Well, it, it really was. Could have been about a six or seven yard gain, but Old Walker just did an outstanding job of streaking to the sidelines and coming around the field. Richardson kicked it in the end zone last time, and he'll do the same here. And Epperson will down it on one knee eight yards deep this time, and Duke, same old territory. They're on 20 yard line, first and 10. They carried six plays before they punted the first time down the field. As you look at Dwayne Epperson heading to the sideline. So we'll bring the Duke offense back out under the direction of Spencer Romine, who's in. And hopefully going to show Fred Goldsmith and the Clemson Tigers, in particular, a better look at the option this afternoon, get them guessing a little bit. Here's Romine coming out. Marshall and Epperson are behind him in the backfield. Scotty Montgomery and Corey Thomas are the, are the split ends. Play fake, and the pass to the flats is going to go to Montgomery. He's got some running room. And a nicely designed play gets them eight yards or close to it to the 28-yard line. Good way to start a drive, Bill. Well, there's no doubt about it. I think that uh, Duke's wisely trying to throw the ball on first down. Let's take a look at it. Number two, Montgomery. They're going to fake up inside, and then they're going to throw back out to the fine uh, sophomore receiver, Scotty Montgomery. And uh, he's had an excellent year so far. Eight yards on the game, brings up second down and seven. Montgomery goes the opposite side of the field as the slot receiver this time out to the wide side. And off goes to, oh, it's Romine on the option keep, and Anthony Simmons says, I got you, and I got the pitch man too. <laughs> well, he's just able to run that down. Romine did a good job thinking the uh, trap option up inside, coming down the line, and let's take a look at it. Here's Romine. Faking to the fullback, coming out, but watch number 41. Look at the acceleration of Anthony Simmons. Boy, is he a good football player. He's going to play at that next level before too long, and it's a fine tradition of outstanding linebackers here at Clemson, and uh, he's going to break Jeff Davis's record as far as tackling. Third down and two for Duke, trailing 3-0, and they get the first down to Terrence Dupree, their sophomore tight end from Sefner, Florida. Tackled by Robert Carswell. I like the way Duke is mixing the offense up. There's Romine throwing out to Dupree. Big number 89, 6'3", 223-pound sophomore. And Carswell, who's had an outstanding game or two or three, the last three from his free uh, strong safety spot, came up and made the tackle. 11 tackles each of the last two games this true freshman has played. First and 10 now for the Duke Blue Devils. They're out at the 34-yard line. Romine with play action to throw up top, and he's got Corey Thomas behind two. 
defensive backs for the Clemson Tigers bring it down in time. Well, again, I like the game plan of Duke. Every time on first down, they've come out and faked a running play and then thrown the ball up top. So, you know, what they're trying to do is prevent Clemson from stacking everyone up there to stop their running game. And as a result, Clemson is up there. So what's Duke doing? They're throwing the ball down the field. So that's just good strategy. Unfortunately, he's not only going to miss the pass, but Duke would be penalized. Lineman downfield. Second down. So Clemson refuses the penalty, and they'll put uh, Duke in second down. Romine on the day, three out of five. Two of those three receptions have been on third down. The second down and 10 coming up for the Blue Devils. They're on their own 34-yard line. Marshall and Epperson are the backs. Three wide receivers. Hurdle Jack is to the wide side of the field. The delay handoff to Epperson. That's a nice block from Lay Marshall and gets up to the 41-yard line. Number 33. Brought down there on the tackle by Raheem Abdullah, but Epperson benefited very nicely from Lay Marshall's block. Well, again, it's a good, here's a good look at it. There's Romine going the back. There's Marshall, number 33, and Anthony Simmons that comes along, along with uh, Fox, making that stop. Here's another look at it. That's a good block, excellent block. Fourth time to third down. Clemson ahead by three. Duke with the football, and the pass is complete to Scotty Montgomery. Montgomery has blockers ahead of him, cuts across the field, and is headed inside the 10-yard line to the five. Antoine Everett made a saving tackle. Otherwise, Montgomery would have been dancing in the end zone. Another key third down conversion, but this one for big yardage, 53 yards. Well, there's Montgomery. All right, go back. Romine sets his feet and finds Scotty Montgomery coming across. Watch the block by number 33 out in front. Gives him extra yardage. And there's, there's Antoine Edwards making that tackle. Here comes the pressure. Good pressure on him, but he's able to set his feet. Romine does a good job of staying in there. That was Adrian Dingle coming in there, number 52. First and goal from the seven-yard line. Out to throw, Romine has to reserve reverse field. Big block from Dupree, but Mon Wilson tracks him down at the 12-yard line. Loss on the play of five, thanks to Mon Wilson. Well, that's a picture-perfect tackle. Number 42, Mon Wilson, makes an excellent stop. This is going to be the pass off the option, but he can't find an open receiver. He pulls the ball down, and watch number 42. You can't draw it up any better than this. You can't draw it up. He is looking for the open receiver. He wisely pulls the ball down, but watch number 42. Right down the middle, wraps him up, keeps his feet moving. Second Clemson sack of the day. This one for three yards back to the 10-yard line. And the handoff goes to Lay Marshall, and there's not much there. They'll give him forward progress to the nine on second and goal. But again, Anthony Simmons, the ACC's reigning defensive player of the year, in on the tackle. Well, that's the play they want to establish. They want to establish their fullback up inside on the trap, but Anthony Simmons can play the trap. Then he can go out and play the trap option. He's all over the football field. Second, third down now in goal. Duke, three out of four on third downs. This is the ninth play of the drive that started at their 20. Lomine under pressure, and he's going down. Anthony Simmons and Mon Wilson combined at the 18-yard line for a loss of eight. Well, they don't give you much time to throw the ball. Watch number 41 come from his linebacker spot along with Mon Wilson, 42, and they're back in there on Romine. Here's another good look at it. There's 41 Simmons. There's 42 Wilson. Two excellent linebackers putting the pressure on the Duke quarterback. Sims Lenhart now to attempt a 35-yard field goal out of the hold of Jeff Hodrick. There's the kick. It's a low liner, but it is good, and we're tied up. Clemson and Duke knotted up. Duke marches downfield thanks to a 52-yard pass reception by Scotty Montgomery. Lenhart ties it up at 3-all. 
Pair of field goals on the board here as we move quickly through the first quarter. Three all here at Memorial Stadium. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the ACC, presents this salute to excellence question. How many ACC teams have won or shared a national championship? You know the answer? We'll log on to the Internet address on the screen with the correct answer before the fourth quarter begins, and you'll be entered to win two tickets to the ACC Champions Bowl game. Stay tuned. We'll have that answer for you before the end of the game, we promise. Tony Horn and Antoine Edwards are going to be back to get the kick of Sims Lenhart, who has just tied this ball game up with a 36-yard field goal that capped a nice Duke drive of 10 plays. There's Tony Horn, a dangerous, dangerous anywhere you put him on the football field, really. Has a chance to set all kinds of records in the receiving department. I guess one of the reasons that Raymond Priester has to be concerned, he stands about 225 yards away from a 1,000-yard season rushing. Tony Horn is about equal distance from a 1,000 yards in the air. Only four ACC combinations have achieved that great milestone down through the years, and obviously nobody in Clemson history. They've never had a receiver who's caught a 1,000 yards in a career. Here's Antoine Edwards. Antoine Edwards cuts outside and has some room. And Antoine Edwards fumbles the football, and it's picked up by Duke. Well, that's a big play by the special teams of Duke kickoff coverage. Nobody's more special than Sims Lenhart. The kicker <laughs> gets the fumble, and Duke comes back with it. It was Luke Roush who knocked it loose. Edwards does an outstanding job of breaking tackles, but he loses the football there, and there's old Lenhart. He comes up with it, and what a big play for him. Let's take another look at it. There's Edwards bouncing out. He keeps, that's good second effort running. It really is. Good moves, but he loses the football. That's the most important thing. Hang on to that football, and Sims Lenhart comes up with it. Wobby well, Settles also helped out, but Spencer Romine's back out on the field with great field position after the fumble at the 43-yard line of Clemson. First and 10, and he'll go to the flats to Montgomery. Worked for four, so why not? And Montgomery down inside the 40-yard line to the 39. DeMont McKenzie with this tackle, and let's go to Jim Noble on the sideline. Steve, I'll tell you what, even though that last drive stalled, plan on seeing a wide-open Duke offense this afternoon. After all, hey, the Blue Devils have nothing to lose. They are working, of course, on a 15-game ACC losing streak. The last time they won here in Death Valley, 1980, in case you're counting, that is eight losses in a row. Second down and six coming up for the Duke Blue Devils now at the Clemson 39. Romine with a deep handoff. It goes to Wilkes. And Latavius Wilkes is close enough and gets another first down for the Duke Blue Devils, who taking advantage now, Phil, of this great turnover that they've picked up. Well, let's take a look at it. It goes back and fake the pass and hands off on the draw style play and right out in front. Excellent blocking. And as Fox comes up from his free safety position and makes the uh, makes the stop. You know, getting back to what Duke is doing on first and 10, every time they've thrown the football and on long yardage, they're running the draw. So they're keeping Clemson off balance. Gain of 11, sets up another first down. Lenhart to throw, or rather uh, Romine to throw, and it is complete. Corey Thomas picks this one up. Another Duke first down at the 15-yard line of Clemson. Michael Allen drove him out. If there's one area defensively where Clemson is susceptible, Bill, it's in the secondary. Well, this is what they're doing. Clemson's stacking them up on uh, first and 10, trying to prevent them from running. But we take a good look. Again, a play-action pass. On first down, out to Corey Thomas, the outstanding receiver. And you've got to hand it to Romine that he's faking the run, faking the run on first down and throwing that ball out there. Corey Thomas, seventh all-time in receptions career-wise at Duke. And Duke piling up some big yards here. And this is going to be Duad Rashid. Well, on the, the carry, Anthony Simmons on the tackle. That's the first time they've run on the first down, and Rashid is a, an excellent uh, fullback. This is what they want to do is keep them off balance. Now they're running that fullback up in there trying to establish. Rashid, number 35, and Marshall, number 32, are the leading ground gainers for the Duke University Blue Devils. Rashid, you see his season numbers for a career. He averages 5.2 a carry. Second down coming up, and Ron, and... 
Roman throws to an open pocket in the end zone. Corey Thomas was the intended receiver and cut inside. Well, let's take a look at it. Here's Romine back to pass off the play action. And look who's there, number 41, Anthony Simmons, putting the pressure on. I think there was a little mix-up. Thomas went inside, and I think Romine thought he was going to throw to the outside, and he just threw it to the open spot, and no one was there. Brings up third down and seven. Score tied at three all. Field goals from Richardson and Lenhart. Spencer Romine brings them out. Duke's done pretty well on third. Brush is on. Hit as he threw. The hit administered by Raheem Abdullah. The big 6-6 outside linebacker from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, you've got to get rid of the football quick down in here in this what we call the red zone. You don't have time to hold it. Let's take a look at it when you see big number 53, Abdullah, and he'll come in and put pressure. There's 52 and 53, Abdullah 53, Dingle 52, good pressure put on the Duke quarterback. It's a 30-yard kick coming up for Sims Lenhart, who is looking for his 15th field goal this season in 18 attempts. A low-line drive again is good, and the Duke Blue Devils get in the lead. They cash in on the turnover after the kickoff return was fumbled by Antoine Edwards, and they go downfield quickly. The Duke Blue Devils lead it here by a score of 6-3 to three with 35 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Coming up next week, one of two games you'll see on stations near you. Next Saturday, you'll see from Raleigh, either Virginia taking on NC State, or others will see the Wake Forest Demon Deacons travel to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Check your local listings for the game that will be seen in your area next Saturday. Of course, Florida State and North Carolina are having themselves a little showdown tonight in Chapel Hill. Well, they certainly will, and that'll be a very important game because the winner of that game probably will play Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, representing uh, going against number one. You know one thing, Steve, when you get down in what we call four-down territory, you know that Clemson's going to lay their ears back and get upfield. So you've got to get rid of that ball quick. You've got to take three steps drop. You can't hold it. The quarterback has got to throw it. Clemson making a move on their special teams now. Antoine Edwards, who fumbled that last kickoff return, as you look at Tony Horn, is replaced on the kickoff return team by Brian Wofford. So it's Horn and Wofford, the deep receivers. There's Horn on the bottom of your screen and to the upper right corner, and now in the center of your screen, Brian Wofford. Well, that's one thing that Clemson's put a great deal of emphasis on. Don't turn that football over. Win the turnover battle. And they don't like to see them turn it over, and that's why you don't see Edwards back there. And you see Horn back there. They're talking to him. Sims Lenhart with the kick, and he's going to drive Horn deep into the end zone. He'll take it from three yards out. Horn gets a block from Wofford, but not good enough. As Jenkins got the tackle, and Eric Jones was able to disrupt the block. And Clemson will have the football back for their second possession of the afternoon, officially, at their own 21-yard line. Well, Horn is dangerous. Every time he touches that thing, uh, you know the people in the stands sort of come up out of their seats because when he catches a pass, he returns a punt, returns a kickoff. Uh, Tony Horn is no doubt one of the outstanding football players throughout this country. Elon Green has completed a pass for 32 yards. It helped set up a field goal. And he's 79 yards from the end zone as we close out the first quarter. Pass goes to Tony Horn, and Horn is trapped in the flats. He's locked up and won't get out. There's a flag on the play. Stallmeyer and Lamar Grant in on the tackle for the Duke Blue Devils, and we'll see what the flag is going to be with 16 seconds remaining in the quarter. It looks like a face pass. Uh, we'll see what the official has to say. Oh, it's holding. Ooh, and this pushes Clemson back even further. See if we can see it here. Well, that's uh, excellent. Uh, let's take a look at it. There's Neil on Green throwing out to Tony Hill. Watch the defensive play. Oh, there's no way for him to run. And excellent defense by Ryan Starmeyer, number 44, and Lamar Grant, number 37, the defensive back that did not allow him any running room at all. And when you can do that to Tony Horn, you've done a good job. Holding calls are marked off from the spot of the foul. That one occurred right at the line of scrimmage. It backs him up to the 11-yard line and brings up first down and, oh, about 20. Witherspoon and Xanders, the setbacks for Elon Green. Now Lawyer in motion. A 
across, and the quarter comes to an end. So Clemson has to contemplate their fate some 90 yards downfield from Pager, trailing the Duke Blue Devils through one, 6-3. Welcome back to Death Valley, where the Duke Blue Devils are leading the Clemson Tigers 6-3 to three as we start the second quarter. Steve Martin here along with Bill Dooley and Jim Noble on our first quarter stats show Duke in command of the clock, also of total yards, especially because of their passing yardage, including one big 52-yard hookup from Spencer Romine to Scotty Montgomery. And, of course, Clemson has a turnover. So, Bill, you talked at the outset about the key for Clemson is to establish a run game, win the turnover game, Right now, they're winning neither. That's exactly right. And you've got to give uh, Duke a lot of credit for keeping Clemson off balance. And it is first and 20. And we're still a little off kilter as far as getting started is concerned. Tony Horn is sent to the sidelines with an equipment adjustment. And that means Rob Gardner will come in and take his spot. Well, he had a big reception last uh, week against Wake Forest for a touchdown. And... Uh, you know, if he can do that again, that was an outstanding catch. First and 20 for Clemson. Duke shifting up defensively. Four-man front. Neilon Green with a good play fake on the corner, and he's on his way. Neilon Green lost a little bit of step there. Otherwise, he had them all beat. And he gets out to the 48-yard line. Mike Steinball had to run him down from behind, but Green picks up 34 yards in the process. Well, he is very dangerous on this option play. Let's take a look at it as he fakes, comes down the line, fakes the pitch, and cuts back across and just breaks the arm tackle of the Duke defender. And what an outstanding job. Uh, G.K. Abunaway, along with Mike Steinball, number 94, made that stop. Two rushes for Nelon Green, 40 yards. As you look at a bone away on first and 10 for Clemson now. They're out at the 45-yard line. Play action, and Nelon Green in the face of a big rush going downfield for Tony Horn for the catch. What a catch by Tony Horn down at the 10-yard line. He was covered, but it didn't matter what concentration over Lamar Grant. Well, he just had great inside position on Lamar Grant, number 37, but outstanding concentration on the foot. Let's watch Green's back, fakes the pass, fakes the run, and then throws it. And watch the position that Tony Horn has. He's inside. He's inside of Grant, number 37. And watch the concentration on the football. He just does an excellent job. Green fakes the run. Good uh, run pass action. And, oh, does he get hit. Boy, that's quite a hit. Right there by Chris Combs, the excellent defensive tackle of Duke. First and goal at the nine. Sam Zanders almost stripped of the football down to the seven-yard line. He kind of turned back, Bill, and pleaded for help. Tawambi Suttles gets the tackle, the senior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, for the Duke Blue Devils. Well, we'll see what uh, Duke does down here. They're probably going to come after Clemson, as Clemson has been going after Duke when you get down in the red zone. So, uh, they're not going to try to run it. They're going to probably try to stick the ball straight at Duke, and hopefully they can run it into the end zone rather than having to throw it. Big plays, the key to this drive, two of 30-plus. Neilon Green keeping and then throwing to Tony Horn for 35 more. Here's the fake. The blitz is on, and the pass to the end zone. It is incomplete for Brian Wofford. A little too much there. Darius Clark put some good pressure on Neilon Green, may have forced him to pass a little early. Well, there's no doubt about it. They were coming. They had the uh, blitz on. Oh, there's, uh, let's take a look at it. This is what we call a bootleg misdirection style pass, and there were three Blue Devils right in the back. And Walford went up for the ball, but he hit, uh, looks like he hit a, a case on the outside line and uh, may have injured himself. He ran head on into that equipment area that, that seems to be right uh, underneath where our camera's position, but that's a mobile position down there. There were some equipment casings down there that, and it should be noted, Bill, he made the catch. It was a spectacular yeah, catch, but just, it was out of bounds. Let's look at it. He made the catch, great concentration, but he's out of bounds, as you mentioned. There's the case that you're running into. Oh, that's, that, is the, that is the base of the camera. That's the base of the camera yeah. down there, that mobile camera. Let's go to Jim Noble, who might have a better angle on it. 
Steve, Brian Wofford has just gotten to his knees. I was standing right here when he slid directly into that mobile camera unit. In fact, his head hit the tire, which is the only unpadded part of this mobile camera cart. He's to his feet now. He looks a little woozy. They look like they're going to take every precaution, but boy, as you saw on the replay, what a violent collision with Brian Wofford. I hope it was a four-ply, not a steel belt. In there. Yeah, he, uh, but what a great effort by Wofford to come down with that football. That's the kind of effort it takes to, to win. No doubt about it. Clemson's got to get their concentration back here. Third and goal from the six-yard line. Handoff goes to the fullback. That's Terry Witherspoon. First man through, and he's down to the one. Grabbed by Abunaway. And again, the Clemson <laughs> faithful say, don't bring the field goal kicker out. You go for it. They are about a yard and a half out, and in comes David Richardson, and you can hear the crowd not too happy with it. Well, it's always a lot easier to call to make that decision up in the stands than it is on the sideline. Now, Tommy West is saying, as he did the first time, we got a lot of football left in That's this game. Right, Let's man. get every score we can, and this play the percentages. Very wise decision by Coach West. Kevin Laird to hold now for Richardson. The field goal is going to be 19 yards. He hit an 18-yarder first time through, and this one's good as well. So David Richardson says, I can get the short game together, and he does. A 19-yard field goal caps the drive that started back at the Clemson 21-yard line. It's tied at six. David Richardson's 19-yard field goal has tied this game up. 12:41 left to go in the second quarter. It's six all, Duke and Clemson. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South. You call the play feature. A look at a big call from ACC games past. Just a part of the big crowd on hand on a nice day in the Upstate. Clemson's offensive line getting a little instruction here after mounting a drive that included two big plays of 30 yards or better. It was a six-play drive. Epperson there get, getting set to receive the kick of David Richardson, and he'll try to return this one. First one of the day into the wind a little bit. And Epperson gets up over the 15-yard line, brought down at the 16 by Chris Jones. Scoring drive, six plays. Nelon Green carried one play for 34, five yards, and then he passed for 34 yards to Tony Horn. But then the drive stalled, and uh, David Richardson had to come through with a field goal. Well, it's been a big play uh, half so far. Each team making the big plays in the passing game, and that's what's given them the field goal. So uh, you have to say that uh, you give a lot of credit to the quarterbacks on both sides of being able to fake that run action pass and throwing it to the receiver for the big play. Epperson and Marshall, the setbacks. No mind to throw on first down. Has a nice ball out there to Montgomery, but they say he trapped it. Michael Allen covering on the play. And so this one comes up incomplete and it brings up second and ten. No mind on the day, six out of 11. Well, it's another good uh, fake. This is Scotty Montgomery, number two, going out. The ball's a little bit beyond his reach. You can see it hit. But again, that's uh, Michael Allen covering on the play. But again, on first and ten. They fake the run action pass and then throw it, and it's keeping Clemson off balance. It really is. Marshall and Epperson set back. And off now goes to the first man through. That's Lay Marshall, and there's nothing there. Chris Jones is in on the tackle along with Dingle and also Harold Means, sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Gets a lot of reps. Judith Chris Jones, who has a, a tackle and an assist on this very series. Fred Goldsmith looking on, looking at third down. His team's been pretty successful. Third down, no matter what the distance this afternoon. They're three out of six on third down plays. Long, short, medium, doesn't matter. Romine, under center. Romine with time to throw. This time a little too tall for Corey Thomas. And let's go to the sidelines of Jim Noble. Steve, we've got very good news to report on Brian Wofford. He's up. He's walking around. I just spoke to him. He said, please tell everybody I'm okay. So I'm telling everybody he's okay. The guy you should be worried about is me. Everybody thinks I parked our Jefferson pilot cart where Brian could run into it. Please tell everybody I had nothing to do with it, guys. <laughs> we did say you pay for any medical damage. We did say that. I remember that. Brian Morton getting set for his second punt of the afternoon. His first was 37 yards. Tony Horn back to receive. Clemson shows rush, now sets up for the return. 
Morton with a win to his back. And Horn will catch it on the bounce. A daring catch with Duke players all around. He's looking to gather up some running room. And gets Duke out the middle, or rather Clemson out the midfield. A daring play by Tony Horn after a 46-yard punt. We Keenan got, Holly on the tackle. We have a flag on the field back at the 15-yard line. I think we're going to find that Duke was holding, holding on that punt. He almost tackled the guy trying to rush it. Yes, it is. Now, Clemson may ask them to kick this thing again. Well, they, they've got pretty good field position. I don't know if they will or not. Uh, let's see. They've got the ball at midfield. Now they're going to have a decision here. Now they're going to, I think you're right, Bill. They think they're going to decline it. On the kicking team. The penalty is refused. First down. Well, you get the ball at midfield. You don't want to try to kick it over again. But uh, the Duke player almost tackled the Clemson guy coming. <laughs> Let's go to a commercial pause here with 11.25 left to go in this first half. Our score is tied at 6 all. Four field goals on the board. That's what it looks like right now. 6 all. Duke and Clemson. Clemson with the football at the Duke 49. Elon Green with one fake. And then he goes for keeps. And he's got Wofford open and for the touchdown. Brian Wofford from 50 yards downfield. Make it 40 for the touchdown officially. Lamar Grant covering on the play, but Clemson cashes in. Big play, first play of the drive. And Brian Wofford pulls in the pass, his third touchdown catch of the season. Well, it's a well-executed play. Let's take a look at it. Here's the fake to Wofford. Then he pump. That got the defensive back to come up. And Wofford just got behind him, and there was no way that Lamar Grant, number 37, could catch him. Nelon Green made that pump, and it froze the defensive back. Lamar Grant and Warford just went behind him. David Richardson tacks on the point after, and the Clemson Tigers have our first touchdown of the day and lead this game by a score of 13-6. to Let's look at it one more time as Nelon Green goes back. There's the pump fake, and then you see the ball up in the air laid up so Warford could run under it, but Lamar Grant went for the pump fake. He thought he would throw it, when Nelon fake on the uh, play. Next Saturday, you'll see one of two games. Some of you will see Virginia and North Carolina State battle in Raleigh. That's where Bill and I will be. Others will go with Jack and Doc down to Tallahassee, where Wake Forest and Florida State will do battle at high noon. Check your local listings for the game to be seen in your area next Saturday from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Nelon Green with his 31st career touchdown. Look at his numbers today. 40 yards rushing, 127 yards passing. Clemson's total take and total offense is 194, and he's been directly responsible for about 66% of it. Well, what a half he's having, but you also look on the other side. Duke has had a big play first half also. All of the points coming off of big pass plays early in this ball game. We've had at least six plays in this game, Bill, of 30 yards or more from both sides. So more fireworks seem to be in the offing this afternoon. 11-16 left to go in this first half of play. Clemson getting set to kick it away. You know, uh, Steve, a lot of them have been on first down because they feel the defense is up playing the run. And what they do is fake a play-action pass, and then they're throwing the ball off play-action. Here comes the kick. It's a short one. There's a breeze blowing in from that west side. Hurdle Jack has it, and he's trying to get outside, and there's nothing to him. Big tackle made by Robert Carswell. Even though he's a starter, he's still a true freshman, and that doesn't get him off special teams. I don't think he wants to come off. Well, a lot of players like those special teams. It gives them a chance to play. Let's... Let's take a look at it. Carswell has just had an outstanding, uh, done an outstanding job the last three ball games. Hurdle Jack, number 19, he's going the wrong way. He started trying to find some open spot, but Carswell's just did a good job of settling down and making the tackle on him. Duke starting at their own 15-yard line. First and 10 for Spencer Romine, Latavius Wilkes, and Dewad Rashid in the backfield. Romine to look across for Scotty Montgomery, and he had to ditch things at the 18-yard line. Simmons in there on the tackle. And let's watch this Clemson touchdown one, once again. Here's the fake, and that's the pump right there. That's what freezes the defensive back of Duke, Lamar Grant. And, of course, 
He just does an excellent job. Brian Wofford running under that ball when DeLon Green laid it up. Wofford having a career day. 81 yards in an afternoon is a career high for him. He has his third touchdown of the season. Spencer Romine looking at second down. And he's got Latavius Wilkes. It takes a hard hit very close to the first down. Well, you Lots know, down there by Carswell and Fox. Their plan has been pass on first down and run the draw on second down. Let's take a look at it. Here's the draw right here. Good job by in Fox. Watch number 12 come up from his free safety position along with Robert Carswell making the stop on Latavius Wilkes. Got the first down. First and 10. All at the 25 yard line. Here's Spencer Romine again. The throw and it is incomplete intended for Terrence Dupree. He had double coverage over there from Carswell, Mon Wilson, and Antoine Edwards decided he'd just chime in and help. But again on first down, they throw it and he throws it just a little behind the big tight end, Terrence Dupree, number 89. Let's look at some scores around the country. Up in Raleigh, NC State getting set for next week already. Florida leading by a field goal over Vanderbilt. Stock has fallen since the loss to Georgia. Second down and 10 at the 25. Romine on the option, calls his own number, and gets some running room for another Duke first down. And he'll be marked down at the 38 yard line. It'll be a gain of 13 to Marco Fox, the sophomore from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Well, this is what Coach Fred Goldsmith likes about uh, Romine. Here's the fake, the trap option, and here comes Romine. He does an excellent job. What a good block by the big tight end on uh, Dupree, number 89. Let's take another good look at it. That's 89, Dupree making the block, and Fox, the free safety, comes over and makes the hit. Good job by Romine running the option. 12 yards on the game, first and 10 at the 38. Oh, mind to throw. It's a screen, but it falls ahead of Wilkes, and we've got a whistle and a flag on the play. Well, that may have been a lineman downfield, Steve, that uh, the umpire pulled a flag. Let's take see what they have to say. Yes, it is. Lineman downfield. Screen fell apart from the start. And it's going to go against Duke, and it'll push them back a little bit. We have an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll have first down. So it'll be first and 15. The ball backed up to the 33-yard line. And that's an unfortunate turn of circumstances, Bill, because it does negate a rare running play for a first down that Duke has. That was George Burton, the umpire. George is big enough to play uh, defensive tackle. He's about six <laughs> foot six. I'd like to have him on the line. First and 15. Oh, mine back to throw. Has a man open, and that is Corey Thomas, and he's going to be ruled complete at the 43 yard line. It'll be a gain of 10. Michael Allen on the tackle. He'll be five yards shy of the first down. Let's take a look at it. Again, a little play action fake. Romine. He throws the ball outside where there's no way that Michael Allen has a chance of breaking that ball up. A good completion to Corey Thomas. Uh, now it's one of the outstanding receivers ever to play at Duke University. Out of Wilson, North Carolina. Second down and four. Romine. Tackle from behind and a great play made by Adrian Dingle. The junior from Holly Hill, South Carolina. Makes the tackle. It's his seventh for loss this season. That's just penetration by Dingle. They're going to run the option play, and there's Dingle coming in, number 52. Good penetration. You know, Duke runs this option every way you can run it, but Dingle was not to be denied. Austin Smithwick, number 56, was trying to block on him, and it uh, looks like Romine may have uh, got a little twisted ankle or something on that play. That's been a problem. These young quarterbacks for Duke have not stayed healthy. And it's really been tough. Bobby Campbell takes his spot. He's 6'5", a freshman from Hicksville, New York. He's not as good an option quarterback, but he's probably the best throwing quarterback on the team. Blitz is on. He's throwing for the hot receiver. Oh. Wilkes, who dropped the football. 
Latavius Wilkes is out there by himself, and Campbell does a good job of faking and throwing to the tailback coming out of the backfield. There's no one, there's no one covering. Let's take a look at it. Watch Campbell. He lays the ball right out there, right on the fingertips of Wilkes. Oh, what a big play that could have been if Latavius could have held on to that football. Instead, Brian Morton comes on the field for the third time this afternoon for a punt. Punts of 37 and 46 yards his first two times out. Tony Horn is back to receive on fourth and five. Here comes the punt. It's a good one driving Horn back to his own six. Oh, that was a block in the back. That'll be called back. Yep, there's a flag down down at the eight yard line. It's a 53 yard kick and it is returned to the 24 yard line. But the penalty will draw our attention back down at the eight yard line and uh, Clemson's going to start out in a hole here. Yeah, that that's going to be negated. That was uh, number 25, Brian Wood Woodford, uh, the guy who's having an outstanding day. At Walking receiver. the back by the return team. That's half the distance. First down. First and 10 Clemson, but look what they're starting at, at the four yard line. And there's Romine, and that could be a bad turn of events for the Duke Blue Devils. He's done a pretty good job offensively. Well, he really has, but uh, Campbell, the, uh, the passer has come in the ball game, and he laid the ball right on the money to Latavius Wilkes, which would have been a tremendous play. Could have probably tied the ball game up. 7.46 left to go in our first half. It is 13 to 6. Clemson in the lead. The Tigers have the ball and they're at their own four yard line. Handoff goes to Witherspoon and he runs right into Chris Combs. The outstanding sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. One of the leading tacklers and sack men for the Duke Blue Devils a year ago. Well, that's quite a tale about Combs. He's gained about 20 pounds since last year. He's worked in the weight room. He's really done an outstanding job. The, the coaches at Duke are high on him. He, uh, he's their kind of football player, as they say. He may be one of the best linemen to ever play Duke by the time uh, he leaves there. Second down and nine. A hard-earned yard for Witherspoon that time to the five-yard line. And off to the fullback. Again, this is Lamont Hall picking it up. And Lamont Hall pressed into service as a fullback. It's five easy yards out to the 10. Well, it's you know, you, you should let him run the ball. If he's going to block 20 times, he ought to touch the ball once. So, <laughs> Well, you know, you're not going to throw to him out of the fullback spot. Hey, 6'4", 251 pounds. Boy, I'd like to be running behind him. Clemson has thrown at the tight end. <laughs> you can count the number of times on two hands in the last four years, and they've thrown even less to the fullback. Third down coming and about three. And straight ahead it goes to the fullback. This time the hard yards Witherspoon doesn't get close to the first down, but it's not going to get it. It's going to be fourth down. They've been away and Stallmeyer, the two inside linebackers, on the tackle. And so Clemson backed up to bad field position. Will Punt the ball away, leading 13 to 6. Well, I know Coach West is not happy about that mistake in the kicking game that backed them up. Now, as you mentioned, Duke will probably get very good field position out of this uh, exchange of punts. Kevin Laird will be his first kick of the day. Hurdle Jack is back, calls for the fair catch, and has it. And yep. a flag on the play. Clemson player Tony Horn was inside that two yard buffer. He and DeMarco Fox went breezing by Ertle Jack at the 45-yard line, and this will be even better. 42-yard well, kick. That's a good call by the official because he ran right in the center. We have kick catch interference, non-contact, five yards, first down. Well, that'll put Duke in business now at midfield, and we'll take a timeout here with 5.48 left. You see DeMarco Fox getting a little too close to Ben Ertle Jack. 13-6 Clemson in the lead. Clemson Tigers on Brian Wofford's 50-yard pass reception from Nelon Green, leading Duke 13-6. 5.48 left in the second quarter. Our nationwide insurance ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week, offensive tackle Todd Boyle from North Carolina State University. A sophomore from Stanton, Virginia, has a 3.16 grade point average in accounting. Congratulations to Todd Boyle, our nationwide Scholar Athlete of the Week. Uh, Tiger faithful here. 
I'm not sure if that's a possible Tiger football player or cheerleader. Adequately disguised here. First and ten, Duke at the Clemson 49. And Bobby Campbell still at the helm. 6'5 freshman arches and throws a little too tall that time for Scotty Montgomery. But again, another play action pass on first down. And he was wide open. Scotty Montgomery was wide open and he just overthrew him a little bit. Montgomery's got excellent speed. Uh, he had uh, two steps on the defensive back, Antoine Edwards. There's Campbell's stats on the season five interceptions, two touchdowns. But a big freshman from Hicksville, New York, up there on Long Island. Second down and 10. Best field position of the day for the Duke Blue Devils. And off goes to the fullback. That's Lay Marshall. A little up and over, gets a little bit of running run, but he runs into Damani McKenzie. And also Harold Means picks up two yards on the play to the 48-yard line. Well, their, uh, their thing is throw on running downs and run on passing downs. So they're trying to keep Clemson completely off balance. There's big number 35. Boy, is he a load. Oh, DeMont McKenzie. DeMonte McKenzie. From Lake City, South Carolina, 265 and a sophomore. Duke now three of eight on third down conversions, staring at third and eight. Trailing 13-6. Play action for Campbell, and he scrambled. And Campbell looking outside. Simmons forces him out, oh. but wait, he got the first down at the 39, well, 38-yard line. Nice game by Bobby Campbell, who picks up eight on a 10 on the play. Well, he did a good job of pulling that ball down. Let's take a look at it. There's a fake to the fullback. This is going to be the option pass, and he wisely pulls that ball down. But the most impressive thing is he gets out of the arms of Anthony Simmons, and Anthony Simmons very rarely ever misses one. Very few people survive that tackle. <laughs> it's first and 10 at the Clemson 38 yard line. 454 left in the first half. Duke trailing 13 6. Draw play goes to Lay Or rather, this is going to be Epperson on the carry. Mom Wilson on the tackle. And it gets a little bit of running room, about three yards on the play. Let's go to the sidelines. Jim Noble standing by. All right, thanks, Steve. You can see Spencer Romine behind the Duke bench. They're working on his left ankle, which they are saying is a mild sprain. However, they are not icing it yet, or at least they weren't a moment ago. They're trying to play around with it, maybe tape it up, get it loosened up, and they tell us he could return in the second half. Well, Bobby Campbell's doing a pretty good job. Both quarterbacks taking good care of things. Duke has yet to turn the football over. Clemson has won. Here's Campbell, a pass incomplete through the hands of Ertel Jack and a flag on the play. Flag back at the line of scrimmage in the area you would suspect holding. Well, that was a good pass by Campbell, and it was wide open, and it is holding, as you mentioned. Uh, anytime you see that flag in that area, you know, you know exactly what it is. All right, here's Campbell, and he throws the ball right out right in the hands of Earl Jack. He just wasn't able to hold on to it. And number 33, David Evans, was covering on the play. Uh, it was a well-executed pass play. Just uh, just didn't hold on to it. Penalty's going to back Duke back to the Clemson 46-yard line, and it'll be second down and 19 for the Blue Devils. Second and 17 from the 46-yard line. 11 yards on the penalty after the hold. The pass to the flats oh. to Montgomery incomplete coming up to cover Michael Allen. Well Allen almost diagnosed that before it took place. Yeah he, had, <laughs> he was in amongst uh, hostile territory that time but he had the advantage he was going forward. Brett Goldsmith now looking at his team possibility of uh, sputtering on this drive looking at third down. And Wake Forest. Going up against Rutgers today, 17-7. Wake in the second at the Scataway, New Jersey. Third down coming at 18 for Duke at the Clemson 46. They trail 13-6. Campbell gives on the quick oh. opener to the fullback that time, Epperson, and Epperson tackled by Mon Wilson. It's a gain on the play of uh, about five yards, and it'll bring up fourth down. He almost pursued it. Let's, let's, let's take a look at it. As Marshall, he gets a little open room right there. And Mon Wilson, number 42, is able to hold on to him. But you watch the pursuit of the orange jerseys trying to get around that ball carrier. And you've got to be impressed with it. Ryan Morton in to kick for the fourth time this afternoon. 
45 3 is his average. He was trying to get this one inside the 20. He's going to succeed, but it wasn't how he drew it up, I'm sure. Down to the 16 yard line. It equates the same thing. Let's go down to Jim Noble for an update on what we're going to see at halftime. I'll tell you what, Steve, it's been an interesting first half, but folks, you won't want to go anywhere when the gun sounds. We have an action packed halftime coming up for you. We will update the bowl situation in particular, how it pertains to Clemson. We've got a couple of bowl scout scouts down here, and we'll tell you where the Tigers might be headed. Also, we hear there's a big game going on in Chapel Hill tonight, so we will talk about Florida State and Carolina coming up at the half. You know, I've heard that rumor, too. First and 10, Clemson at their own 15-yard line. Elon Green to Terry Witherspoon. And Witherspoon cuts up over the 18-yard line. It'll be a gain of three. Tackled by Chris Combs, running Ryan behind Glenn Romford. The the well, that's Coach West. He has a concerned look on his face. They have not been able to move the ball on the ground like they'd like to, and the big plays have come off the passing game other than the option keep that Nelon Green has run. So give the Duke defense a good credit of stopping and stuffing uh, that running game. With a spoon, 10 carries, 32 yards. Second down now and six after the four-yard game. Play fake for Green. Green sets up, fires. It's a little too tall for Tony Horn. And Lamar Grant is set up on the play and coverage. It'll be incomplete, and it brings up third down. Well, I like, I like the way that they have... Uh, Mixed up. There's a good look at Horn going out, makes a stop, cuts back inside. The ball's thrown a little bit high and to the outside for him, and normally uh, Horn doesn't uh, miss those, but Lamar Grant was covering on the play, the, the fine cornerback from uh, Duke. Jackson, New Jersey is his home. Clemson one out of four on third down, and they're looking at third and six now, and they'll call timeout to talk things over with 2.39 left to play. Elon Green coming to the sideline. So Clemson will burn a timeout here to see if they can keep this drive going with a 13 to 6 lead. Let's look at how things happened in this game so far. It was uh, Clemson getting on top first, the first time with the football, a 19 yard field goal to David Richardson. Then uh, Sims Lenhard came back and capitalized on a drive for 35 yards on the ensuing kickoff. Clemson fumbled. Duke punched it down again for a 30-yard field goal to take a 6-3 lead into the second. Clemson tied it up on a 19-yard field goal from David Richardson. And then after a series of punts, Brian Wofford on the first play of the drive from midfield upstairs from Neilon Green for his 31st career touchdown pass to Brian Wofford who pulled it into the end zone for the third time this season. And that's where we stand right now. That's the difference in the ball game, 13-6. Florida now tacks on another touchdown to lead Vanderbilt. That game going on down in the swamp this afternoon. 10-0. Clemson Tigers now looking at third down and six. Football is just out over the 18-yard line. And Clemson hasn't seen third down that much this afternoon. Elon Green has converted some big plays today. He's in the shotgun. Xanders and Hall are set up as his protectors. Wofford, Horn, and Lawyer are the wide outs. Oh, there's a, what a big play. play. Darius Clark picks it up. <laughs> Touchdown, Duke. Well, Duke faked the blitz, came out of it, and then came again and did a good job of mixing it up. Big number 27, Lewis, comes in from the uh, his defensive back spot, walks up to the line of scrimmage and makes a hit. Let's take a look at it. There's Green back in the shotgun. T.K. Abunaway coming, and there's number 27. Knocks the ball right out of the hands of Nelon Green. Kevin Lewis, 27, sophomore defensive back. Second turnover of the day, and a dramatic turn of events could see it tied as Sims Lenhart will set up for the point after. Out of the hold of Hodrick, the kick is up, and it is good, and Duke has tied this game up. Ten points on turnovers this afternoon. The Clemson Tigers have given up, and here is Green. Here's a good look at it, and there's 27, Kevin Lewis making the hit, and Darius Clark, number 13, picks it up. Give credit to Coach Bobby Trott. He, he designed this where he would get up and fake and come back out and then come back again. So, you know, excellent job by the Duke defense. Execution-wise is just outstanding. Five-yard return of the fumble by Clark. The tackle for loss is the... Actually, the fourth of the season for Kevin Lewis. 
who nailed him behind the line of scrimmage for a 14-yard loss. And now Duke stuns the crowd here at Death Valley as they tie it up at 13-all with 2.33 left. Well, yeah. what a ball game. What a ball game <laughs> to come up and be 13 to 13. Uh, this uh, far in the half, two minutes left, as you mentioned, in the half. And to be tied up, uh, I think we've got a real ball game going here. Clemson faithful, a little restless here. They expected that this would be a big day for their offensive team, but uh, it uh, has not been in the second quarter. Outside of the big 49-yard pickup for the touchdown by Brian Wofford. Turnovers have given Duke life with 10 of their 13 points as a result of the miscues. Well, they just haven't been able to establish a running game. And that really, you know, when Clemson can't do that, it really hurts them. Well, they backed up, Bill. Last two drives have started at their own four and their own 15. And Lenhart now will kick it away. This one's a short kick. Horn at the 11. Horn picks his way through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that tackle. Mm. It's by Pierce. Watch this. He's being blocked by three players, and then he picks up the tackle by holding on the Horn's jacket. Let's, Let's see this play again. There's Boone away, number 54, and then there's 27, Kevin Lewis, the defensive back, and then you see D. Clark pick it up, go into the end zone. You know, just an excellent job of executing the blitz, an all-out blitz by the Duke defense. He did not play against Wake Forest because of the injury. There's Kevin Lewis. The outside linebacker from Orlando, Florida. He made the hit. Darius Clark, who sat out the Wake Forest game with an injury, comes back nicely, scoops it up for the five-yard return and touchdown. First and ten. Clemson back to throw. Elon Green, and he finds his tight end, Lamont Hall, who is a tight end on that play instead of being the fullback, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. It'll be a gain of five on the play. I'd like to know the statistics on first down passes by both teams in this ball game. It seems as if every first down they're throwing it. There's the big uh, Lamont Hall, the big tight end, who's just such a good football player uh, for Clemson. Had a big game last week against Wake Forest. Four catches, in fact. More in a day than they've thrown in five years to the tight end. Second down coming in about five as they've got it out over the 33-yard line. Steve Martin, Bill Dooley, and Jim Noble here at Death Valley. And... 65,000 suddenly quiet fans. Here's the handoff with a spoon up the middle, and he is going to be short of the first down by about a yard and a half, up over the 35 yard line to the 37. Chris Combs and Ryan Stallmeyer make the tackle for the Duke Blue Devils. Well, Combs is all around that football. You know, every time you look up, it's either Chike Abunaway or Chris Combs, number 93, making the stop. So, you know, the Duke defense is uh, doing a very good job against the Clemson offense this afternoon. Third down and a yard for Clemson. Scored tied at 13. At their own 34-yard line. 38-yard uh, line, actually. Here comes Witherspoon, and he's got the first down after the 40-yard line. Stallmeyer and Ibunaway on the tackle. Duke is really suffered in the second quarter this season but today they are reversing that trend as they have scored seven points in this second quarter on a fumble return for touchdown by Darius Clark and they are tied in this one with Clemson at 13 all clock moving a minute 21 left to go on the half first and 10 green with a quick pass out to Gardner and he has got it for about eight yards out to the 48 yard line. Well, that was a blitz by uh, the Duke defense. Both linebackers walked up and uh, rushed in, but Green got rid of the football in a hurry. Did a good job of throwing out to Rod Gardner, number 23. Second down coming up for Clemson. All out blitz again. All out Green. blitz. Uh, Stallmeyer making that one, uh, Steve. He came from his linebacker position, Ryan Stallmeyer, number 44. And again, Duke is coming after Delon Green. Let's take a look at it, and uh, we can see Green under pressure. Ryan Crenzo also helped out on the play for Duke. It's going to be third down and six. Green back to throw. Here's the pass. Incomplete for Brian Wofford. Fourth down coming, and the punt unit probably will come on. 
That was TK Abunaway out there covering on that play. Abunaway in the flats as Nelon Green comes to the sideline with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Clemson and Duke are tied at 40 all. Kevin Laird, or 13 all, right? Back deep for the Duke Blue Devils, number 19, Ben. Could have sent a heart attack through the coaching staff. <laughs> How would we give up that much offense? Hurdle Jack is back there for the punt. Kevin Laird, Hurdle Jack gets the fair catch, and it is down at the 23-yard line. And did you see Tony Horn try to get out of the way? So <laughs> he wanted to get away from that two-yard, the little uh, radius, to keep him interfering with his right to catch the football. Let's take a look at Tony Horn. Watch him. He knows he's getting close to the two yards, so he backs out of there. <laughs> and that's a, you know, that's an outstanding job of avoiding which could have been a penalty on that play. Just heads up football by Tony Horn. And it's a heads up job by the official giving Tony Horn credit for having the right. frame of mind of getting out of the way. He was probably within two yards when the ball got there, but he was no threat to the kicker or to the receiver. And now. Duke will say, hey, we've got a good first half. We're going to let the clock run down, maybe force Clemson to take another timeout here and uh, see what happens on first down. They'll just go down on the football. And the clock will move on, 19 seconds. We may not get another playoff before the end of the first half. So it's uh, Duke and Clemson having at it as the backfield heads off to the locker room and the Duke Blue Devils now talking things over as they have tied the Clemson Tigers, and let's go to Jim Noble standing by with Clemson's Tommy West. All right, Coach West, our things seem to be going according to plan until a turnover I know you did not want to have going into the locker room. Well, I didn't want to turn over on the kickoff, and then I didn't want to turn over right there right before the half. Eh? Yeah, we're playing pretty well. We're giving the ball away. Raymond Priester did not play in the first half. If you need Raymond, could he play in the second half? No, he's not ready to play or we'd have played him. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank Get in the locker room. Folks, a surprise, surprise. We've got a tie at halftime, but stay tuned. We've got a whale of a halftime coming up. The score from Death Valley, Duke 13, Clemson 13. We'll be right back. Today's game is brought to you by Alltel, where computing and communications converge. Alltel, always more than you thought. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. And by Fairfield Ends by Marriott. There's a score that should keep you watching during the second half, folks. Duke taking it to Clemson in Death Valley. The Tigers and the Blue Devils all tied up at 13 at halftime. That score, obviously, a big surprise for some ACC watchers. Let's take a look at the scoreboard and see if there are any other major surprises going on. NC State pouring it on at home. The Pack leading Maryland 31-7 at halftime. Florida coming off that loss against the Georgia Bulldogs, shutting out Vanderbilt in Gainesville. And one other score, a non-conference game, Wake Forest leading Rutgers up in New Jersey 17-14 at the half. Well, we're very excited about this second half to come. We hope you are too. To take a look back at the first half and set us up for the rest of the way, here's Steve Martin and Bill Dooley. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jim. You know, Bill, at the outset, you talked about Clemson having to establish the one, run and win the turnover battle. They've done neither here at halftime. What's been more responsible for them not being able to run the ball, field position or Duke's defense? Well, I think the combination of both of them. A field position, there's no doubt about it. They hurt themselves with some penalties. That's one thing that they have not done is they're probably the least penalized team in the ACC, and here today, They've got a, a number of them. Turnovers. They are not winning the turnover battle. And then also field position. So this is not a typical Clemson day. Well, they've got to get it more typical. This started out in typical fashion as we look at the first half highlights. First possession down the field in the first quarter. Clemson took the lead. David Richardson says, yes, I can kick the short ones. A 19-yard field goal. That put Clemson up by a score of 3 to nothing. But Duke would come right back on their second possession of the football. Sims Lenhart would get his... 14th field goal of the season. This one a 36-yarder. It's tied. After a turnover on the kickoff, the first of the day for Clemson, Duke dives in close again, and another field goal by Lenhart. Duke is up by a score of 6-3. to three. Clemson will gather itself together in the second quarter and open up with a nice drive. Nelong Green uh, upstairs also to Wofford, and this time he gets a, a big kick by Richardson for the field goal, but here is Nelong Green throwing upstairs, and he gets Wofford on this one. Well, it was a big pump fake. He drew Lamar Grant, number 37, up, 
Evans, and Walford got back behind him, and the pump fake held the defensive back. Big that, play. That put Clemson up 13-6, to six, but Duke wasn't done yet. Green gets a big rush from Kevin Edwards off the corner. This was an all-out blitz, and Kevin Lewis, number 27, comes in, and D. Clark, number 13, the defensive back, picks it up, and, you know, that's been the key. Duke has kept him off balance. Let's take a look at our all-tell halftime stats. You see the total offense in favor of the Tigers, but the two in their turnover category is what's plaguing them at this point in time. Time of possession in favor of the Duke Blue Devils, and the noted performer today so far has been Nelon Green with 162 total yards. We're tied up at halftime, 13-13 here at Clemson, South Carolina. We'll return second half of action coming away after these messages from your local ACC station. Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive presentation of the ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, the best way to get there. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. And by Food Lion, extra low prices and more. The Duke Blue Devils come from behind on a turnover for a touchdown by Darius Clark to tie it at halftime, 13 to 13. Let's go to the sidelines. Jim Noble stood by just a moment ago with Duke's Fred Goldsmith. We're here with Duke coach Fred Goldsmith, who has got to be very pleased with this first half. What is your team doing right, and what do they have to keep doing? Well, we're playing hard, but, uh, you know, we, we've got to hit. When we have wide open receivers, you know, like we've had uh, down the middle so much and everything today, we've got to hit those receivers. And we can't uh, make mistakes like we made. We made a couple of big, big errors on, on pa uh, well, on one pass play that they ran against us last year. We'll practice. We can't make mental errors, and we got we got to keep playing hard physically. Actually, we got to play it harder, turn it up a notch, and eliminate the mental mistakes. I believe we ought to be able to throw the football. Uh, I think both quarterbacks have been able to throw. I think you know we just settle down, uh, and if we can protect the passer, mix up enough run to keep them off balance, and so we have time to throw. That'll be the key to the game. Can Spencer Romine return in the second half? No, he can't. He's got he tore all the ligaments in his foot uh, or something, so he's out. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Go back and join your team. Coach Fred Goldsmith, very happy to be tied with the Clemson Tigers at the half. Guys? Well, once again, his quarterback for the day that he intended to start, Spencer Romine's going to be down, but he still feels that he can throw the football on Tommy West's team, so we'll see what happens as uh, Duke kicks off to start the second half. Lenhart's kick. Sends Horn back to his two-yard line. Tony Horn now brings it upfield, looks for a block, and things are looking like they're going to break down there for a moment, but there's a flag on the play. He'll come up to the 38-yard line. The flag is thrown back at the 26. Keenan Hawley in on the tackle. But the flag is back at the 26-yard line, and looked like the officials were about to blow that thing dead when he was stopped. And that's why. Well, another big mistake in the kicking game, and I know Coach Tommy West is upset again because it takes away the field position. With holding on the return team, that's a 10-yard penalty and a first down. Here's what Clemson has done on their first possessions of the ball game in the first half and the first six scores on their first three. And then, of course, a fumble sandwiched around two punts. Of course, what doesn't show there is that uh, they had a fumble on a kickoff return following a Duke field goal. Two turnovers, 10 points for Duke off turnovers in the first half. Clemson set up at their own 16-yard line after the penalty. Once again, bad field position, and here's Terry Witherspoon, and he's getting five yards on this play. Ryan Stallmeyer. Now, Coach Dooley, what adjustments do you make? for both of these teams as you enter the second half? Well, first of all, I think Clemson's got to establish a running game. They have made the big plays in the passing game, but they have not been able to run, and if they can run, that'll open up more passing. Now, so they've got to keep them off balance. For Duke, they have got to continue to throw the football and mix in the run to keep the Tigers off balance. So, you know, I think if the both teams can do that, they'll be successful. Second down and five, Clemson at their own 21. And off goes to Witherspoon. And he is stopped cold by Eric Scanlon, among others. Right at the point of attack, they'll give him credit for about two yards. Ryan Stallmeyer and Chris Combs held out. Well, it's a good job by the Duke uh, defensive line of Stiffy. 
Look at here. Watch number 93, Chris Combs, a big defensive tackle from Roanoke, Virginia, come in. Clemson has got to be able to move those, uh, move that ball and move the chain by running it to open up their passing game. Third down and four coming. Clemson and Duke are tied at 13 all. Here is Neilon Green scrambling out of the pocket. He is going to be shy. Oh, he's got the first he's down. Got he's got it out to the 28 yard line. First down coming up for Clemson. Darius Clark, who has a score on this game, had the tackle. This is one thing Neil on Green can do. He's looking for the open receiver. He can't find it. And wisely, he pulls that ball down. Lamont Hall, number 82, the big tight end, makes a block right out in front. G.K. Abunaway, number 54, makes the stop, but after the first down is made. Eight-yard gain. And here comes a handoff to Sam Zanders. And Zanders uh, charges up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. Again, you heard both coaches say that key performers that they were counting on today are not going to answer the bell here in the second half. Spencer Romine tearing ligaments in his foot. He's out for the rest of the day and could be out for the remainder of the season, which has just two games beyond this. And, of course, Raymond Priester's ankle not ready, said Tommy West. So Terry Witherspoon will get most of the call at tailback. Well, it looks like Clemson's trying to establish a running game, Steve. They're running straight at it. They're on 33. They're second and five. Xanders this time and not much is there. Oh. And it is going to be coming in on the tackle. That is Chris Ruzik from Poffeyville, Texas. A junior, 6'4", 250. Number 96, Chris Ruzik with the tackle. Neil on green. My gosh, 169 yards. The rest of the team has only been able to compile 57. So you can see the guy that's uh, carrying this offense. And they need to depend on more of the tailback and the fullback for a running game. The quarterback can't do it all. Elon Green did a lot of it last week when uh, his team was barely ahead of Wake Forest at halftime. Out of the shotgun formation. Big rush is on, and Elon Green gets out of the pocket. I don't know how, and he's brought down. At the 29-yard line, it'll be a sack on the play and a loss of about five. Chris Combs on the tackle. On the tackle, Watch, Combs. this is an all-out blitz by the Duke. Here comes Booneway, number 54. He breaks free. This is an all-out blitz by the Duke uh, defense. And as uh, Stahlmeyer, number 44. And guess who comes over and makes the play? Number 93, Chris Combs. What an excellent job by the defensive tackle. Three sacks on the day for the Duke defense. Fourth down and nine. Duke and Clemson tied at 13 all. Laird's kick called for on the fair kick. Whoa. <laughs> he almost fumbled that one a little bit. Ben Erdeljack gets that ball and barely puts it down. A 37-yard kick by Laird. No return. And Duke will set up shop when we come back. ACC football is brought to you in part by the new Top Flight XL Titanium Golf Balls. Titanium powered for explosive distance. Steve Martin, Bill Dooley, Jim Noble at Death Valley in Clemson and the Tigers and the Blue Devils are tied at 13 all. Duke with the football first time in the second half. First and 10 and they've got it at their own 33 yard line. Bobby Campbell in for the duration now in place of the injured Spencer Romine. There's a little misdirection and a play fake that nobody buys this time. Mon Wilson and Lorenzo Bromel stop what looked to be a fake reverse play action and a potential pass. Well, let's take a look at it. It appeared that, as you mentioned, Steve, that it was going to be a reverse. Here's the option fake. Now it comes down, fakes the reverse, and then Mon Wilson, number 42, comes through and makes the tackle. That's, a, that's an excellent play. Also, Brombo, Lorenzo Brombo is on that. Loss of 13, second and 23. Back to the 19-yard line. Pass by Campbell is complete to Corey Thomas, but not for much. Out to the 28. And it'll be a gain of five. Antoine Edwards in on the tackle. Now let's take a look at it. Thomas, uh, as I mentioned, one of the outstanding receiver in Duke history. This is Campbell going back, a three-step drop, throws right out. And look at the concentration. That ball bobbles, and Corey Thomas is able to bring it in. And, of course, Antoine Edwards comes up and makes the stop. Gain of nine. 
Third down and 14. Campbell on the draw to Wilkes. And Wilkes picking his way up over the 35. And he's going to be shy of the first down by a bunch here, but he's uh, brought down at the 36 yard line. Robert Carswell on the tackle. Well, this is a good call rather than a pass on third and long. They come up with the draw, and there's Latavius Wilkes comes in. But watch number nine come up from his strong safety position, Robert Carswell, who's done such a good job out of the secondary for Clemson and making the stop. Tony Horn to get the kick of Brian Morton here on the punt. Fourth down and seven to go at the 36-yard line. Duke and Clemson in a 13-all tie. And now it's a fake. Brian Morton looking to get over the end, and he is set oh. back at the 40-yard line. Doesn't get the first down. Rahim Abdullah catches up with the surprise on the fake punt. And Clemson will take over an excellent field position on the Duke side of the football field at the 40-yard line. Well, Duke is going all out to win this football game. They're pulling all stoppers out. If he just has a little more speed, he could make it. But Ryan Abdullah comes up with the tackle. He's looking, looking, throw the ball, and now he pulls it down. And watch number 53, Abdullah, come up and make the stop. He wasn't very, just a few yards shy of having that first down. Boy, this could be what Clemson needs to get this ground game going. Field position. Elon Green rolls out on first down. And he'll run ahead for four yards. Gets to the 36-yard line. Mike Steinbaugh on the tackle for Duke. Well, this is one thing Clemson has done. They have not just run out of a pocket. They're taking and moving the quarterback around so they can't get upfield on him on first down. That was just an old sprint out pass, and Green wisely pulled it down when he didn't find the open receiver and picked up good yards. Second down, six. Lamont Hall and Terry Witherspoon behind Nelon Green in the eye. The pitch to Witherspoon going left. And Witherspoon up over the 35. Gets down to the 33-yard line. Ryan Stallmeyer in on the stop. And it's a three-yard game. All right, let's take a look. This is the old sweep-style play with him coming up inside. But they just aren't able... The Duke defense is stacked up there. They've got about eight men up there on that line of scrimmage, and the offensive line is just not able to get a surge to move them back off of there. That's running against a lot of people. High ball game, third and three for Clemson at the 33 of Duke. Hand off. No, it's going to be Nelon Green keeping, and he's close to the first round down. Kevin Lewis, who made the hit on Green that spurred the fumble that allowed Darius Clark to tie this ball game up, makes the tackle. Well, let's take a look at it from ground level. Watch Green come down the line. Good fake. There's number 27, Kevin Lewis. He's coming down the line. He fakes as if he's going to pitch and turns up inside. Number 27, Kevin Lewis, the outside linebacker, defensive end, makes the stop. But Green, again, takes the load for this team and moves those chains. And in Maryland trying to respond, but NC State's still pretty big up in Raleigh, 38-14. We'll be headed there next week. First and 10, Nelon Green moves the chains at the Duke 30. Play action, going to the air. Downfield has a man open. That was Horn, but getting a hand on it was Lamar Grant. Oh, that was an excellent defensive play. Grant came across. Horn was wide open, and Grant reached in with his right arm and hit the ball. Let's take a look at it. Green goes back, fakes to his tailback, Weatherspoon, and watch his horn, and watch... Grant come in there with his right arm. Did an excellent job. You can see that Nelon was upset because he had Horn wide open. But just an excellent play by the defensive back from Duke. His Lamar fourth, Grant. His fourth breakup of a pass this year. Nelon Green, five out of nine, 137 yards. Looking at second and ten from the 30 of Duke. Blitz is on. And a handoff to Witherspoon. Sometimes you can blitz and guess right. That time Duke did, and they plugged up the hole. Well, they certainly did, and they've been able to keep Clemson off balance. G.K. Booneway has done it, but there's a flag on the play. Let's see what happens down there on the field. Key area of the field to have a penalty because if it's against Duke, it puts Clemson in the four-down area. If it gets against Clemson, it backs them up out of field goal range. Uh oh, it's unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams. Is that what they call? That's Tommy West. He looks a little upset about the call. We have dead ball fouls on both teams. Personal foul against the offense as a personal foul against the defense. 
Those penalties are going to offset. Well, that's exactly what it was. Fred doesn't look too upset about it because uh, it didn't go either way. <laughs> He still got his defense out on the field at the 30 yard line. Witherspoon, 16 rushes, 49 yards on the day. Clemson just trying hard to establish the rush. They are still under the century mark unofficially for the afternoon. Tied at 13 all, six and a half left in this third quarter. Neilon Green with a five step drop over the middle, incomplete. Now Lawyer wrestled to the ground, but they say no penalty flag. Well, that was a good. Uh, call by Duke they fake the blitz and then they back out of it and of course you can see Nelon Green was upset that uh, that ball hit right in front of the receiver and here comes David Richardson last week Bill and I had the pleasure of seeing him hit a 52 yard field goal for a career record against Wake Forest and now we'll see him try to get the leg into a 47 yard field goal with a slight wind at his face Kevin Laird out of the hole for 47 yards out here comes the kick, oh, it's and it's blocked. Blocked right down the middle, and it'll fall dead inside the 10-yard line. A block, and now Clemson saying it's a live football, then go in for the score. They say no, it's down there. And Duke will take over after the block of the field goal attempt. With 6.07 left to go in the third quarter, Clemson and Duke are tied at 13 all. Problems in the kicking game plague us here. Tawambi settles. Watch number six for Duke on David Richardson's field goal attempt. That's a high hurdle right there as he goes up and gets his hands out and blocks it. Once the ball goes beyond the line of scrimmage, even though it's touched, you know, it's as if it's never been blocked before. Tawambi settles. What a big play in the ball game by Tawambi. And Clemson gives up the football at the 30-yard line, so both teams come up with problems in their kicking game. Duke on the fake punt falls two yards shy. That set Clemson up in the field position that they've been looking for to try to get things going on the ground. But Duke's defense holds them there. And on the 47-yard field goal attempt, Fred Goldsmith's team comes up very big. Tawambi settles with the block right up the middle. And now it is Duke with the football again. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Campbell over the middle. A pass for Dupree is deflected. And he was covered hard by Harold Means. Well, he threw that one maybe just a little hard for Dupree to hold on to. But it was right on the money, even though it was a little little high. Dupree's already caught a ball so far today. He has five passes. A touchdown reception on the year. Campbell's still looking for his second reception. He's one out of five and nine yards. You must point out, though, he had a certain touchdown, but Latavius Wilkes <laughs> dropped with couple, nobody in cover. A couple of them in their hands were dropped. Second down and 10. And off goes now to Marshall. Straight ahead, Lay Marshall, the fullback, and he's up to the 33. It'll be a gain of about three. Adrian Dingle in on the tackle for Clemson. Spencer Romine started this game, but he is out for this afternoon, and his status for Duke's remaining two games is uncertain. Duke with... Georgia Tech next week at home, and then they'll finish the season on the 15th of North Carolina. On the 22nd, actually. Campbell's pass complete for Scotty Montgomery at the 41. Well, you can't throw that ball any better. You throw it on an out pattern to the outside. There's no way for the Clemson defensive back to break it up, and Scotty Montgomery makes a big hit. Let's take a look at it. Campbell goes back, throws the ball, and look where it is, outside, and what an excellent catch by Scotty Montgomery, and Antoine Edwards makes the tackle. Here's another look at it. Ball's outside, and Montgomery reaches out and catches. There's no way Edwards can stop that at all. Sophomore from Cherryville, six catches, 88 yards. First and 10, Duke in a tie ball game. Epperson picks his way off left tackle. It's up over the 42 to the 43 yard line, but there is a flag down on the play. Looks as if the Clemson defensive line was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. Let's see what the official uh, has to say, but that's what it appears to be. So it will be offsides. Ron Cherry talking with Duke. Here comes the call. Offsides on the defense. A five yard penalty. First down. So it's first and five. 
With 5.16 left to go, there's Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. Shouting the instructions in. He's probably had to work a little bit harder than he thought because Duke's yeah. offense has been out there a while. Seven Clemson penalties for 44 yards. Campbell on the option. And Campbell tucks it up, but there's a big difference between Campbell and Spencer Romine on the option. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, Campbell looks a little tentative when he runs it. But uh, let's take a look at it as Campbell comes down the line of scrimmage off of the trap option. And he cuts up inside, but he doesn't really go up in there. And Mon Wilson makes the tackle along with Adrian Dingle, number 52. You know, it's very uncharacteristic of Clemson to have seven penalties. That's one thing that they pride themselves on. They're not going to make a lot of mental mistakes. Second down and four. Campbell now back to throw. Campbell has the pass almost intercepted by Michael Allen. He was intended for Corey Thomas. Well, Michael Allen anticipated that the ball was going to be to his outside, and the ball actually came back inside. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. There's Campbell throwing, but he throws it inside, but it's deflected by number 38, Darrell Crutchfield. He hits that ball, and, of course, that's the reason it goes back inside. And Michael Allen wasn't able to break on it. Crutchfield, the true freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. Third down and four in a tie ball game. Here's the third quarter ticks away. Campbell looking upfield. Again, he's going for Dupree, but Antoine oh, Edwards has a flag down. It may be pass interference uh, against Clemson. Pass was tipped by Carswell, and Edwards was in on the play. Let's see if he hit a little too early. Yes, it's pass interference. The eighth penalty of the day against Clemson. They'll talk this play over and see where they put the ball. The pass was ruled, tipped on the play. As a result, there's no flag on the play. Uh, they wave it off. The tip was by Carswell. The hit was by Edwards. Let's see it. Well, I don't know where it was tipped. <laughs> yeah, it was tipped by Carswell, and then Edwards had Dupree's shirt. So it'll be fourth down and four. Fred Goldsmith. Not happy with the turn of events as his team had blocked the field goal. And looked like it was ready to take advantage of the play here. And there is the kick by Morton. And it is a short kick that Horn fields. And now there's that penalty that was claimed against Clemson earlier. Duke got a little close, too close to Tony Horn. Another mistake in the kicking game. Boy, that's, uh, that was number 19, Earl Jack. That, uh, he was too close to Tony Horn. He has to have a two-yard break. So the five-yard penalty after the 37-yard kick, 32-yard kick, gives funds in the football. Let's pause for this message from your local ACC station. The kicking game, or lack of punch therein. Figuring in this third quarter, Duke and Clemson are tied at 13. Clemson with the football at their own 26-yard line. Elon Green on play action, has a man out in the flats. That's Lamont Hall for his second reception of the day. This one's for three yards upfield. And it'll bring up second down and seven. This is a play they used so effectively against uh, Wake Forest last week. Little play action pass, bootleg, throws out to Hall. Just throws a little low, so he wasn't able to run after catching the football. We've had it all in the kicking game here. Duke tried a fake punt that failed, a block field goal for Clemson, and then a five-yard penalty against Duke for getting too close to the Clemson punt receiver last time around. Second down and seven, and Witherspoon is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Eric Scanlon. Scanlon slowed that play down from the start. Well, you've got to credit the defensive line of Duke. Let's take a look at it. There's Weatherspoon. And now you'll see number 91, Eric Scanlon, the big nose guard, 255 pounds, come in and make the hit in the backfield. Under three minutes to play in this third quarter. 
No scores yet in this third between these two as the defenses are starting to settle in and take over. 13 all. Elon Green set in the shotgun. Blitz is on for Duke. A pass upfield for Wofford oh. is out of his reach just barely. Pulled his hands in a little bit too quickly. Tuambi settles covering on the play. To the sidelines we go with Jim Noble. Steve, on the last offensive series, Nelon Green took a shot in the helmet, got his bell rung a little bit. They made Nelon read off an eye chart on the bench, just like you do with the DMV. Uh, Nelon passed the test. He'll get his driver's license, and he went back in the game. <laughs> Comes out now in favor of the punter, Kevin Laird. Well, He's seeing all kinds of different colors. When you get that all-out blitz, that's when you've got to test him if he can read it. That's right. <laughs> Here comes the kick. It's a little short. Erdeljack picks it up. Reverses field, and there's nothing there. Coming in to help out DeMarco Fox. Finally makes the tackle. A 37-yard punt that time by Kevin Laird. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and a use of this broadcast. Without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. The ACC, it was a busy day. Maryland and NC State. NC State up big in that one. Wake Forest and Rutgers. Tight one and bad weather in New Jersey. Georgia Tech and Virginia an hour from now and later tonight. The showdown that's been talked about since August. Florida State at North Carolina. First and ten, Duke at their own 37. Play action for Campbell to throw. And Campbell overthrows Corey Thomas, who points at Michael Allen. But that's all that will happen to Michael Allen this time around. Well, there was a little post flag pattern. Again, a play fake action. The receiver goes inside and then back outside, and he's just over the head of Corey Thomas, and Michael Allen was covering on the play. Good coverage by the cornerback, Allen. Duke passing game has sputtered since Romine has left the field. Two out of nine for Campbell and 17 yards. Look at it, second and ten. Wilkes and Marshall the setback. This is Marshall, and Marshall is really hit right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be Means who gets in there and gets penetration. Well, you know, that's one thing Duke has not been able to establish today is the trap by the fullback, which has been so effective for him. Let's take a look at it. As you see Campbell hand off to Marshall, number 32, and there's 45 Means, Harold Means, coming in and making the stop. So it's third and long now. Big third down play for the Blue Devils. And a tie ball game. 13 all. Minute 47 left in the third quarter. Campbell scrambling off to the left. He'll step up and throw. Complete to Corey Thomas. He's very close to the first down marker. Mark his forward progress and they mark him out to the 49 yard line. A very nice spot for Duke. And they'll keep their drive alive. Raheem Abdullah on the stop. Well, that was a big play. Campbell showed a lot of poise. That's, that's Thomas right there, number eight. He's looking, looking. But you've got to say Campbell keeps a lot of poise, waiting to find the open spot for Thomas to get in it. And then there's Abdullah, the big number 53, coming in and making the play. Good good uh, down possession play. First down, here's Latavius Wilkes trying to get outside. Mon Wilson says nothing to him. Mon Wilson and... Damani McKenzie in there on the stop. Clemson band plays on. Hopes of spurring their defense on to stop this Duke advance. Duke trying to take care of good field position. They started this drive in their own 38-yard line. They have a slight breeze at their back here in the third. That'll move into their face in the fourth should they still be in possession. You know, that's one of the few times on first and ten that Duke did not throw the football. They ran the draw. Second down and ten. And with play action, Campbell to throw again. This time complete to Corey Thomas at the 41-yard line. And again, depending on the spot, he could have another first down. Well, that was a blitz by uh, Clemson. Duke did a good job of picking it up. And watch Campbell throw the ball to the outside of Corey Thomas. And there's no way that the defensive back has a chance, Edwards, number one, of breaking it up. So, you know, that's, that's a big play. They've mixed it up. They've been running on second down, throwing on first. That time they ran on first, threw on second. So 
Good, uh, good call by the Clemson offensive coach. I mean, the Duke offensive coach. Well, we're looking at a measurement here as Fred Goldsmith kind of puts the body English into the look from across the field. Corey Thomas, five receptions, 52 yards today. And uh, Duke looks like they're going to come up short. Well, you know, Coach Goldsmith has got to be proud of the way his Duke football team is playing. They're playing with a lot of effort. Uh, they're really going after Clemson. Let's go to the sideline and Jim Noble as we look at a measurement. Guys, I tell you what, the wind has really picked up down here on the field than it did at the start of the game. In fact, if you look at the goalpost, some of those tassels they have on the top of the goalpost are straight out. Duke will have to go against the wind in the fourth quarter, and with Bobby Campbell, the quarterback, they'll probably throw more, so they may be throwing into that picking up wind. Well, we noticed that David Richardson's kickoffs into that wind in the second quarter were not nearly as short, five yards shorter than they were in the, second, in the uh, first quarter when he had the wind at his back. And as Jim said, the wind picking up here, possibly a factor in the fourth. Clemson or Duke now looking at third down and inches, and Campbell will tuck it under and take it in for the first down at the 40-yard line of Clemson. 21 seconds left to go in this third quarter. So Duke was trying to change their cadence to uh, throw Clemson offside. Let's take a look at it. As you see, Campbell goes down under the blocking of the offensive line and gets the needed yardage. That was a good move by Campbell, not standing straight up. John Jordan, Lenny Friedman, and Chate Melita at right guard, the people that moved them out of the way. Now the third quarter is going to come in to an end, and the Duke offense will move around into the wind as we move to the fourth quarter here at Death Valley. It's a 13-13 tie at Clemson. Clemson and Duke are tied through the third, 13-13 at Death Valley in Clemson. And on next Saturday, Jefferson Pilot Sports presents a diet of games for you. One or the other you'll get at noon, either Virginia and NC State from Raleigh or Wake Forest at Florida State from Tallahassee at high noon. Check your local listings for the ACC Game of the Week nearest you. First and ten for Duke. They're at the Clemson 40-yard line. This drive started at the 38. We're tied at 13. Bobby Campbell, the Duke quarterback, steps up into the pocket and throws a flare pass to the back, and that is Scotty Montgomery. Montgomery's still on his feet and driven out of bounds at the 32-yard line. And it'll be a gain of eight, and is there a flag late? Antoine Edwards with the play. It's a lateral because it was behind the line of scrimmage and going backwards. And it's going to be against Clemson. Getting out of bounds on first Take a look at the third quarter stats. Duke's starting to even things up in terms of yardage. They already own the time of possession, but the big turnover statistic. Duke has 10 of their 13 points off turnovers, and this is a huge penalty. It's going to tick off yardage 15 yards from the spot of the foul down to the 17-yard line. And so Duke is easily in four-down territory here. And the way these two teams have played, Bill, it looks like a score here could look very big. Uh, Duke better watch out. Thompson's going to lay the ears back and come after him in four-down territory. Oh, watch it go. Marshall into the end zone on a quick opener. All the way in from 17 yards out. Lay Marshall. Well, that's that trap play that Duke talked about. They wanted to be able to run, and they run it very effectively. Let's take a look at it, and you'll see that Marshall had quite a hole right up the middle. There's the trap. Good trap by number 74. Excellent block by Lenny Friedman, and he walks. Marshall walks right into the end zone. Boy, Friedman came across there, and he trapped. Here comes Sims Lenhart for the kick after. And it is good, and the Duke Blue Devils now have come with 14 unanswered points on touchdowns, one by their defense, Darius Clark, with a fumble return of five yards to tie the score. And this one early in the fourth quarter on the period's first play, and that is a quick opener option to the fullback, Lay Marshall. It's interesting, Bill, that the way that they've tried to set that trap option up all day to try to get themselves to the corners to make the defensive backs come up. At that time, the trap itself worked beautifully. Well, it certainly did, and you have to give a lot of credit to Lenny Friedman, who came across and made the big trap block. 
but uncharacteristic of Clemson University is to make the mental errors, the penalties that they have had this afternoon against Duke. And the big one, of course, the personal foul. Here we see it again. There's number 74 coming across and making the trap on number 52, Dingle, as he traps him, and they walk into the end zone. It's an eight-play drive, and there is Bobby Campbell. Things look a whole lot better for the Duke offense now. They've worked the ball pretty good downfield. He had some success in the air. And, of course, Lay Marshall from 17 yards out, but the big help there was the 15-yard penalty that set Duke up inside the 20. An eight-play march, 62 yards, took him 239 to execute. Marshall on the 17-yard touchdown run, and the folks at Death Valley are stunned. They haven't seen their team lose to a Duke football team at home since 1980. And Tony Horn says we need a little help. The Clemson faithful all too willing to oblige. Jim Noble says the clouds have darkened, the skies have brought forth some wind here to contend with, but it didn't bother Duke that time around. And Lenhart will get ready to kick it away. A gray afternoon, but no threat of rain yet. This is going to be a very important possession for the Clemson Tigers. They've got to be able to, to get something going change the momentum in this ball game if they expect to win it. Horn and Wofford are deep. The kick to Horn's direction. He's got it at the eight. Horn comes upfield. Dances outside of some blocks and is tackled at the 25-yard line. Gain of about 17 on the play. Ryan Jenkins in on the tackle for Duke, and that's where Clemson will take over first and 10. So Bobby Campbell feeling a little more confident about the way the offense is running. After the 17-yard return, Clemson sets up shop at the 25. Clemson's first three possessions of the second half, a punt, a blocked field goal, another punt, and now they're on their fourth timeout. Lamont Hall is the fullback. Play fake. Nelon Green to the flats. It is complete to Lamont Hall out of the fullback position, but uh, not much gain after the catch. To the 29, a gain of four. Darius Clark in on the stop for a Duke defense that is gaining in confidence with every play. That's well played by the defensive back from Duke. Clark just came up, settled down, and made the good stop on the receiver of Clemson. So it's second down. It'll be six yards to go. Clemson pushes up to the 29-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. A tense one here led by Duke. They've led twice in this game. Elon Green surveys the field, checks off, hands off to Sam Zanders, and Zanders runs into Chike Ibunwe. Ibunwe, the leading tackler in the ACC, helped by Eric Jones, and it's a gain out over the 30-yard line to the 32. Clemson fans are a a little disheartened with the call. They feel that Nealon Green is capable of big plays and he should be allowed to make them with the wind at his back. Well, you know, you've got to give a credit to the Duke defense. They have not let Clemson's offensive line move them off that ball. They have not established a running game. And Clemson, I mean, and Duke's defense has just done an outstanding job against the big, strong line of Clemson. Clemson still held under the century mark. 97 yards. There's a low snap in the shotgun, and Neilon Green's going to try to make something out of nothing here. He barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Down to the 29-yard line, and the punting unit must come on. Yep. Let's go to Jim Noble on the sideline. Steve, you'll notice that Duke has held puns into 13 points. That's very significant because, in fact, three of the last four games these two teams have played, Clemson has scored. 13 points and one reason for that could be Bob Trot, the defensive coordinator. He used to be Clemson's defensive coordinator. He may know a thing or two about this Tiger offense. Laird now getting ready for the kick and he booms one out of there. Fair catch called for and taken at the 29 yard line from Ertl Jack and it was a 41 yard kick and no return but Clemson's defense called upon once again. Duke is in the lead. 12-25 left in the fourth. The Blue Devils lead by a touchdown. 
Duke on Lay Marshall's touchdown run of 17 yards, up 20 to 13, 12-25 left in the fourth. Another look at our Nations Bank ACC salute to excellence question. How many ACC teams have won or shared a national championship? Your answer should have been four. Maryland in 53, Clemson in 81, Georgia Tech in 90, and Florida State in 93. There you see the scoreboard that screams that fact to the crowd here in Death Valley. First and 10, Duke at their own 30. Actually, they're 29. Campbell back to throw. Has some time and overthrows Corey Thomas. Good coverage on the play by Antoine Edwards. Steve Martin along with Bill Dooley and Jim Noble at Clemson's Death Valley. We have 12-20 left to go in this fourth quarter. Duke steps out in front with 14 unanswered points, 20 to 13. Look at the stats in the second half. First half yardage, they were marching up and down the field. Lots of big plays. We thought we'd see more of it in the second. We have it. 66 yards to 31. Second down. Handle to Marshall, and Marshall is thrown for a loss, and it is Anthony Simmons. With help from DeMarco Fox, but Simmons usually doesn't need much help. Well, it's the same plan that they've had. Throw on first down, come back and run the trap on second, and there's Anthony Simmons. What an outstanding player he is. When he comes up, boy, when he hits them, they stay hit. That's a good tackle. He keeps his feet moving and does not let the ball carry a fall forward. No gain, third down and 10. Duke trying to sit on a seven-point lead. Campbell back to throw has some time caught by Corey Thomas what he is catch. caught at the 46 yard line what a catch he went up for that ball and brought it down Corey Thomas showed what an outstanding uh, receiver he is let's take a look at it Campbell got good protection throws and look at him go up in the air and come down inside that was Michael Allen covering that's uh, plenty of time to set his feet by Campbell, and Thomas just does an excellent job of bringing that ball down. <laughs> well, Campbell's a happy young man throwing and catching that one. Six reception for 68 yards. That moves Thomas to fifth all-time in receptions in Duke football history. Campbell hands off now to Epperson, and he is corralled down from behind by Lorenzo Brommel, 255-pound senior out of Choppy, South Carolina. Look, here's uh, Arshel, and there's Epperson, number 33, carrying the ball. But look at big 91, Lorenzo Bromel. Uh, they think he's one of the outstanding defensive linemen uh, in Clemson history. Not the biggest guy in there, 255, but he and Rahim Abdullah have the reputation of being the Energizer Bunnies. Here's Campbell in a scramble. Campbell gets out of Tony Planton's grasp and gets rid of it out of bounds. Well, he wisely got rid of that football because that would have been a big, big loss. And you've got to give uh, credit to Campbell for scrambling on it. Let's take a look at it again. You'll see Campbell has good pressure put on him. He can, and he just comes out of there. Now watch him right here, use his head, and just get rid of the football. Ooh, Dingle looked like he got a hand on it. Yeah, that was Abdullah coming in on him, though, putting the pressure. There's Dingle, number 52. Watch him, watch him wisely get rid of this football. I like that. I like that quarterback doing that to keep from taking that loss. It's third down, however, and 12 to go at the 44-yard line of Duke. Clock showing 10:46 or 10:26 left to go, and Duke leading here by seven, needing to convert. Now they've got the clock running after an incompleted pass, so they're going to have to change that around here a little bit. They're going to have to put some more time back on the clock. So Ron Cherry is going to consult and see how much time is left. And they'll put some more time back on that clock to the benefit of uh, the Clemson Tigers. Tommy Westfields, his team's going to need all they can get. So an, an official's timeout to adjust the clock and get it back to where they think it should be. There's Ron Cherry comes back from his communication to the timekeeper. Let's see what they put up. They put up 20 more seconds. 
So it's 10.46 left to go here in the fourth. Duke by a touchdown. A lay marshal option, or actually trap, right up the middle for 17 yards that followed a Clemson unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that marks them 15 yards deeper after an eight-yard pass reception. Third down and 12. Campbell has some time, has Thomas, but in coverage is Antoine Edwards as Thomas got turned around the wrong way. And that'll bring the punt unit on. So the defense is stiffening at both ends. Well, you've got to give uh, Campbell credit. He's not sitting on it. He was going for it. Third and 12, they were going for all of it. And uh, Duke is not just trying to sit and uh, sit on that lead and run the football. They were trying to make the first down. Lanky Brian Morton, all six, six of them from Winter Haven, Florida, a true freshman, back to kick. Tony Horn in punt formation. Here comes the punt. You can see the wind beat it down a little bit. And it's going to take a Clemson bounce before Jenkins gets on it at the 29 yard line. It's a 27 yard kick into the wind that time. And Clemson will get the football back at their own 29 yard line. Motley Campbell consults the booth and Tommy West implores his offense. Well, there's still plenty of time left in this ball game, and right now you need a momentum changer if you're a Clemson Tiger. You've got to do something to get something going here right now. And with Raymond Priester not available this afternoon, it rests on the shoulders of Neilon Green, and he is complete to Tony Horn. The big play combination combines once again. Horn still on his feet at the 45-yard line. A 15-yard play. Ryan Stallmeyer comes in to make the tackle, but Neilon Green, as if on cue, finds Tony Horn. Well, you've got to make something change, and you've got to get it to the big play player, Tony Horn. Look. Look right there as he reaches out and catches the ball, but watch him, watch him run after he catches the ball. This is the thing about Horn. Oh, what a tackle by Stallmeyer as he comes in there. Number 44, the linebacker. Good hit. And that is a record-breaking catch from Tony Horn. He breaks Jerry Butler's record with 59 receptions in a season. His 59th coming right there, his second reception of the day. Going upstairs now for Mal Lawyer. It is complete. Caught at the 10 yard line. Mal Lawyer covered by Lamar Grant, the sophomore from Charleston, South Carolina. His 26th catch of the day. It's a 44 yard aerial, and Clemson uses the big play from Neilon Green. That was an all out blitz by the Duke defense. Here they come at him. Green has just barely time to get it out and watch old Mal Lawyer. He come. Oh, ho. Green is really happy on that one, but he did a good job of way getting rid of that football because Duke was breathing down his neck. A safety blitz that time. They sent Jones in from his free safety spot. Green hands off to Sanders, and he almost fumbled. He yes, fumbles. he did, and Duke has picked it up. The third turnover of the day for the Clemson Tigers. That's Ken Lewis. Ken Lewis, the outside linebacker, number 27. Kevin Lewis, pardon me, coming up with that one. Oh, what a big play. But do. And the look on Tommy West's face says it all. His team had apparently shaken off the problems they had on offense, made two big plays. They were ready to march and possibly tie this ball game up, and now they've turned the ball over. Let's take a look at it. Here's Nelon Green handing the ball off. And there you'll see the ball squirt out. And right there, number 27, Kevin Lewis comes up. Sam Sanders, number six was the young man that fumbled the football uh, the tailback. Negates a 41-yard connection from Green to Mal Lawyer, and here comes Latavius Wilts. Headed to the corner, and now Clemson grasping at the football, trying to strip it clean, and grasping at his right leg is Anthony Simmons. Simmons may have cramped up. He immediately grabbed his right calf. Well, that'd be a big blow to the Clemson defense if they lose Anthony Simmons. Simmons, one of the top linebackers, not only in this conference, but in the country. One of the 10 finalists for the Butkus Award. And one of the all, and he is the all-time leading tackler just about in Clemson history. So as 
We look at the condition of Anthony Simmons as he gets set to get up. We'll take this break and return after these messages from your local ACC station. Standing behind Reggie Herring, that's Anthony Simmons. Looks like he suffered a cramp. Could be returning here soon. Second down coming up for Duke and six. They're on 17-yard line. And moving upfield with the ball is going to be Lane Marshall. He gets up to about the 19. DeMarco Fox, sophomore for Clemson. Comes in for the stop. We have 8.54. Time now starting to become the enemy of the Clemson defense and the ally of Duke leading 20 to 13. Duke. Big third down play right here. Vatican for both teams. Third down and four. Yes, it is. Clemson shows seven in the box. Campbell back to throw. Getting out of one grasp, but he won't get out of another. And he's brought down back at the line of scrimmage at the 23-yard line. Oh, no, it's close to a first down. Close actually. to a first down. Brom in on the tackle. Let's take a look at it. He goes back, a three-step drop. He can't find an open receiver and pulls the ball down. He should have just gone north and south, and he would have gotten the first down. He kind of danced in there, and Clemson, uh, good pursuit, came in. And made the stop. It's going to be close. They're going to have to have a measurement to see whether or not he made the first down. And Fred Goldsmith likely will have to make the decision to kick into the wind here. And it is going to be good enough for a first down. So Campbell gets it. As we look around the conference, and Maryland's starting a comeback here. They've slowed NC State. They haven't stopped it. Florida, 10 up on Vanderbilt in SEC action. Wake Forest, 28 14 over Rutgers this afternoon. Non-conference game. First and ten. Barely for Campbell and Duke. Throwing on first down. Up to the flats. It is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Michael Allen. Intended for Corey Thomas. Well, he broke on that ball, and he almost came over the interception, trying to undercut it, trying to make the big play on defense and give Michael Allen credit. Let's take a look at it. Uh, you can see Campbell setting his feet, throwing it outside, but watch number 10, Michael Allen, try to undercut the ball and come up with the interception. Campbell, 5 of 16 on the day, 54 yards, second down. Duke with 10 to play, 10 to go, and Montgomery tries to spin his way back to the line of scrimmage and is thrown for a loss by Raymond White. The fifth-year graduate student out of Clinton, Mississippi, and we have a Duke player down getting up slowly. That's Scotty Montgomery, but he'll be all right. He's an excellent receiver. Not only can he catch the ball, but he has excellent explosion ability after he catches the ball, get the ball upfield. But he limps to the sideline now on third down and 12, and he might be an option in this passing situation. Ertel Jack comes in and replaces him. Corey Thomas is wide to the short side of the field. 27, 20 to 13. Duke, here's the draw. Latavius oh. Wilk slips a couple of tackles, but he'll be shy of the first down at the 29-yard line. A flag down on the play, however, back at the 20. Well, that's probably a hold when uh, that's what it is. It's a hold against Duke. And likely to be declined by Clemson with the pending punt here for Duke. Let's see what the official Ron Cherry has to say. 7.15 left to go in this fourth quarter. Time getting short for the Duke Luda for the Clemson Tigers. Duke trying for their first win since 1980 here in Death Valley. Expected to decline this penalty and force the Duke punting unit. Holding on the offense. The penalty is refused. Fourth step. All right. That brings Brian Morton onto the field now for Fred Goldsmith, and Duke will punt it into the wind. And that wind is blowing in your face, at Morton's face, and across his face, actually. So this will beat it down and to the left. Should get good field position. Clemson should have excellent field position after this. Now well, the turnover didn't hurt them that time. They turned it over three times, but it sure did kill a drive. It didn't give Duke six, but it took six or at least three away from Clemson. Morton with the kick, and it's a good one considering the conditions. Horn at the 26. Runs into his own blockers, and the going is tough to the 33-yard line. It's a 44-yard kick. It's a good one. 
for Brian Morton, the freshman, and it's only about a seven yard return for Tony Horn. Keenan Holly with yet another special teams tackle, and the Clemson offense comes back out on the field. Clemson's remaining games are tough. If they lose here today, they have to go for wins in both of their remaining two. Home against North Carolina and away at South Carolina in the traditional season open, uh, season capper to get a bowl bid. Here's a flag down on the play. And it looks like uh, Holland Postel was moving a little bit early. The tenth penalty coming up against Clemson. This afternoon. Got a dead ball. False start on the offense. That's a five yard penalty. 65 yards in penalties for Clemson today. Ten of them. One big personal foul set up a Duke touchdown at the 17 yard line. And that's the difference in this ball game 20 to 13. The penalties plus the three turnovers. Nilon Green can change that. Throws over the middle. It is incomplete. Intended for Sam Zanders coming out of the backfield. Now he was he was wide open. Nealon Green uh, sees the blitz coming and he's going to lay it off to his tailback, but he just wasn't able to hold on to it. Leon was alert to drop that ball off to Zanders, but Zanders couldn't hold on to it. That would have been a big play, probably uh, first yardage, uh, first down yardage. 6.53 left, as you saw there, 2013. Duke in the lead. Clemson with the ball, looking at second and 15. All out blitz again. Nelon Green gets rid of it. Oh. Tony Horn to catch it at the 48 yard line of Duke. Kawabi settles. Stop the play there. Well, that's a big play. They had to blitz on, and Horn was inside of the defensive back, and he was able to catch it. Let's take a look at it. They picked up the blitz very good. And there's Horn right inside of Tawambi Settles, number six. And Tawambi was not able to break it up. Big play by Green to Horn. 23-yard pickup to the 48-yard line of Duke. Duke showing blitz, and they come hard this time. The pass complete. And this is to Wofford. Wofford fighting off defenders and gets out to the 35-yard line. It is a 13-yard gain. Kevin Lewis and Lamar Grant in on the tackle for Duke. Well, they're able to pick up the blitz. Here's an all-out blitz. as blown away. He's got plenty of time, and he throws the ball out to Warford, number 25, and you see Lewis come in. Let's take another look at it. Excellent reception by Warford, and there's number 37, Grant, along with Kevin Lewis, number 27, making the stop. First and 10. Ball is at the 34-yard line of Duke. Out of the shotgun, Nealon Green. Here comes the pass to the flats. It is complete. And this is Tony Horn, and he's on his way. Nobody will touch him. Touchdown, Clemson. Well, that's again another blitz. Everyone playing man coverage, and he comes up underneath it. Tommy, Tony Horn just comes up underneath it. But give credit to Nealon Green. He put that ball right on the money. Let's take a look at it, and you'll see Green right from behind as the blitz. And see Horn catch the ball coming back against the Green. Gets the, oh, just an excellent job of catching it and then pouring it on, getting that one step on the defense, and it's a touchdown. At the 6-12 mark, on for the point after is going to be Richardson, and this becomes an important one here. It's up, and it is good, and that ties it at 20 all. 6-12 left to play. Nealon Green throws his 32nd touchdown pass of his career and knocks this one up. 20 all with 6-12 to play. Duke made the decision to send everybody, and Nealon Green made him pay. Tony Horn after the blitz on a play that should have gotten maybe 10 yards at the most. Garners 34 and the touchdown. The point after kick by David Richardson ties it up at 20 all, and we have 6-12 to play. Tony Horn, third game thus far this season with 200 yards of total offense. 119 through the air, 229 all-purpose yards today for Tony Horn. And the kick to Dwayne Epperson is going to be set down for a touchback, and Duke will take it in a tie ball game now at their own 20-yard line. As you look at Tony Horn, 
with his 12th career touchdown, his seventh touchdown pass reception of the season. And there you see what he averages in all purpose yards. Tony Horn, the game breaker. We talked at the outset, Bill, about big plays, big playmakers. Neilon Green and Tony Horn have lived up to that. Well, they've gotten the momentum back, and now it's up to Duke. They've got to get the momentum. They've got to capture it some way, somehow, to stay in this ball game. Campbell under center. Spencer Romine started, left with an injury late in the first half. Campbell back to throw with a screen. Goes to Epperson, and Epperson struggles to get back as new life breathed into this Clemson defense. Clutchfield, Dingle, Mon Wilson, Broomfield, and Raheem Abdullah in on the stop. Well, the Clemson uh, fans and defense are a little more fired up than what they've been. They've been awfully quiet, but now you can hear the fans pulling hard for this Clemson football team. And start to stand. Five and a half to play. Second down and seven. Campbell. Play fake. Back to throw. Has a man. Epperson completed midfield. And brought down. It is going to be Duke football. The ball ruled down at the 43-yard line, a 33-yard hookup. Anthony Simmons on the tackle. This was a play that they had dropped earlier. It's off the trap option pass, and there is the tailback coming down the field. This is a play that Latavius Wilkes had dropped earlier, and this time, number 33, Dwayne Epperson, comes up with a big catch. Big play. Duke in business at the Clemson 44, first and 10. High ball game at 20. Here's the draw to Epperson. And Epperson can't barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard out of the play. Crutchfield and Broomfield in on the tackle. Well, that's a big defensive front there that uh, the Duke offensive line's trying to move. We've got a player down now for Duke. And it is going to be Austin Smithwick, the sophomore from Washington, North Carolina. And he is dazed a little bit. And he will come to the sidelines. A bell rung there for Austin Smithwick. Typifies the hardness of hitting going down there on the field and both ends of the field. Both defenses have dug in after allowing 26 points to be scored in the first half. We've had just 14 here in the second. Second down. 10 to go. Campbell gives it a couple of looks and throws to Epperson after his top receiver, Corey Thomas, was covered on the play. Well, you've got to give credit to the Clemson secondary. They had those receivers covered. Campbell had no place to go. He looked, he started to throw, and he looked and looked. Let's watch the secondary as we can see that Campbell was looking at. Watch the Duke receivers. They're covered. They've got the knee on Corey Thomas. He didn't have a place to go with the ball, and he wisely threw it out to number 33, Epperson. Third and 10. Ball at the 44 of Clemson. Tie ball game. Four and a half to play here in Death Valley, possibly more as we look at overtime. Campbell with a shovel pass to Epperson. Epperson threads his way close to the first down. He's probably going to be a yard shy. Bromel, Carswell, and DeMarco Fox in on the tackle for Clemson. That's that little shuffle pass. They pitched to Epperson, number 33, and that was very effective for him. And, but it is shy of the first down, and it appears that they're going to go for it. It's going to be fourth and about a yard, and, and Duke is going to take a timeout. Campbell, 9 of 21 on the day, or 96 yards. Dwayne Epperson playing a vital role in this drive. It was his 34-yard pass reception that got Clemson, or rather Duke, past midfield. So Fred Goldsmith talking things over with 4.02 left to go here in the fourth quarter. His team driving in Clemson territory and trying to get the go-ahead touchdown. You know, that same pass play uh, was used earlier in the ball game. You fake the trap option. Uh, you fake the trap, and then you pull up, and you throw to the tailback coming out of the backfield. That was the one that Latavius Wilkes dropped number 21, which would have been wide open. Then they come right back with it. Another big play to Epperson. And, of course, as you mentioned, that was the one that got the ball down the field. Now, you talked with Fred Goldsmith earlier this week, Coach Dooley, and you said that 
he felt that they could exercise, they could really execute the trap, build it into the trap option with Spencer Romine at quarterback. But what they've done is do it with Bobby Campbell at quarterback. It's given them a different look, but it probably led to that 17-yard touchdown run, and it's led to a couple of good plays by Campbell to Epperson here on this drive. Well, Campbell's been very effective. I've been impressed with him when he's gotten trapped. He hasn't just thrown the ball up for an interception. He's been able to throw it away. Big play here. Big play. Biggest play of the game. Fourth down and one to go for Duke. At the 36 of Clemson. Campbell up oh. and over Lay Marshall, who scored the touchdown, gets the first down. A leap of three yards to the Clemson 32-yard line. And Duke keeps moving the football with under four to play. Well, that's a big play by Marshall. Let's take a look at it. That's the trap play. As big number 74, Lenny Friedman coming across. And watch Marshall take off. He looks like a 747 taking off of a runway going in there for that first down. Also a nice block for uh, Wes White, the redshirt freshman out of Gilbert, West Virginia, backing up Patrick Manley at left tackle. First and 10, Duke. Campbell back to throw. Plenty of time, has a man upfield. Corey Thomas, ball deflected uh. and almost caught by Thomas on the rebound. Antoine Edwards covering on the play for Clemson. Antoine did a good job of cutting right in front of Corey Thomas and almost came up with the interception. Let's take a look at it as the fake to Epperson. Good pass and look at Edwards right there. Breaks right in front of Corey Thomas. But look at the concentration on the ball by Corey Thomas. He almost, with second effort, came up with that ball. Watch Edwards break right in front of him. And watch Thomas. Good effort by Corey Thomas. Second and 10 at the 33. And not much going on the ground that time. Mon Wilson makes the tackle on the handoff to Lay Marshall. Well, this is another big play coming up as Coach West. He's uh, He seems very calm under the situation. Another third down situation. Sims Lenhart could be the factor in this game. We're at the 31 yard line. It may be a little bit deep with the wind at his face here, but if uh, Duke can get yardage on this third down play, it could give them a possibility on fourth to go for the field goal. It'd be a 47-yard kick from here. Here's Campbell to throw. The pass is complete. And it is complete at Ertel Jack, but it's going to be shy of the first down, and it doesn't give them much more in terms of advancing for the field goal. The field goal unit is coming on. Gets him inside the 30. Timeout on the field as Sims Lenhart thinks things over. Two and a half to play and our score tied at 20 all. 20 to 20 the score. We're in the fourth quarter looking at fourth down and six. Sims Lenhart is on for a 46 yard field goal attempt. He's hit 35 and 30 yarders today. His longest is 50. Here comes the kick. And it is no good. Not enough meat on it. Into a 15 mile an hour win. Clemson holds and they'll have the football back with 2.32 left to play. Just didn't get it. That's off to the uh, right of the bars. You know, the wind had died down and the flags were laying straight down. And then all of a sudden it picked up again. Uh, and I know the Clemson fans are very happy about that. <laughs> it looked like something other than environmental <laughs> conditions concerning that one. Javis Austin is in the ball game now. First turn today at the tailback spot and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Rob Gardner. No, that's that's Brian Wofford on the reception attempt. That was a little slip screen style pass where the line, I mean, the receivers come off and then they slide the outside receiver up underneath, but he just wasn't able to hold on to the football. Second down and 10 now for Clemson at their own 28. Facing the prospect of overtime here at Death Valley. 226 left to play. Split twins to the wide side of the field. Now Lawyer and Tony Horn. Out of the eye, the handoff goes to Austin, and Austin gets himself up to the 34-yard line. Austin out of Clemson is a true freshman. C 
senior year at Daniel High School here nearby. Gained 2,389 yards and rushed for 32 touchdowns. He's had a leg injury that has slowed him this season and uh, left him unavailable last week. Third down coming at four. They're at the 33. Need the 37, actually the 38 for the first down. Elon Green. He'll tuck it under and run, and he's going to be short. Right. Of the first down to the 37. He needed the 38 and a half. And that'll bring up fourth down. 140 left to play. Clock is rolling down. Well, that was a sprint out pass, and uh, give credit to the Duke secondary. They did not allow a Clemson receiver to be open. So Nelon had to pull the ball down to try to get the first down. Clemson has two timeouts left. They're allowing the clock to roll down to a minute 17. Now it still rolls down. And the play clock is not running, and that's why Tommy West is concerned. Now both clocks stop. With a minute and 12 left to go, and it appears that Clemson is going to go for it here on fourth down in the yard. With a minute 12 left, they're in their own end of the field, but they're out there at the 37-yard line. Red Goldsmith has seen his team battle hard here this afternoon. The Tigers have been in a battle all day with this Duke Blue Devil team, and now fourth down and one coming. And Nelon Green looking to the sidelines as the play clock and the game clock both roll off. Clemson watched about 20 seconds roll off that clock, Bill, waiting for the play clock to start. Well, it's uh, now, I don't I don't know the strategy here. Clemson's going to wait, and looks like they're going to take a penalty. The delay of the game. Delay of the game. Yeah, they don't want Duke to have much time when they punt the football. Is what they're trying to do. So. Now they take time out before the penalty flag is thrown and get their punt unit on the field. So they avoid the penalty. They don't want to take a penalty there and back up. They give the kicker every benefit of the doubt. And let's take a break right here with 48 seconds left to go. Clemson uses the clock and tries to reduce the field and the time remaining for the Duke Blue Devils. Is our people. Today's game was brought to you by Pepsi. Generation Next by Nations Bank by Advance Auto Park. The best part is our people by Exxon. The best way to get there by Geico Direct, the sensible alternative, and by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the ACC. 48 seconds left to play here in Clemson in regulation. Kevin Laird is back to punt it away. Fourth down and about a yard. The possibility of a fake? Maybe. Here's the long snap, and here comes the kick. And he got it all. He drives it into the end zone for the touchback. Hurdle Jack thought of chasing it, got inside the 10 and got away. A 63-yard kick by Kevin Laird with a wind at his back. And now Duke will have it 80 yards away with 39 seconds left and two timeouts remaining. Well, that was very good strategy by the Clemson coaches to run the time off the clock and also, as you mentioned, uh, the not to back up and take the five-yard delay. But what a punt. My oh, gosh. Goodness. <laughs> You negate the return. The other thing you fear in that situation when you're kicking it away is a possibility of a return right. for a touchdown. Well, that's by the boards, and now Bobby Campbell will have to drive this team down the field, armed with two timeouts at their 20-yard line. They'll try to win this thing in regulation. And now Campbell will down the football to stop the clock. That effectively, now the clock isn't stopped. Now the clock's got to keep going. They go. Clock oh. rolls down 30 seconds, and so looks like Fred Goldsmith is going to do a little bit of the same thing. Play clock now engaged, and the play clock and game clock are just two seconds off. Campbell may be setting to do the same thing. He will, and we face the prospect of overtime here. With nine seconds left to play, Duke is going to take their chances here, and and sees what happens on the coin toss. 
So regulation is over and we face the prospect of overtime here. It is going to happen at Death Valley as these two teams have gone through regulation and they are still tied at 20 all. And Duke's Fred Goldsmith waiting for the coin toss here at midfield. Of course, ball will be set at the 25 yard line. You have a chance to get the first down, then the score. And after the second overtime, if you're still tied, you must go you for must, the two point must conversion. Must go for the two point uh, conversion. Both of these teams have played very, very hard. I know that Coach Goldsmith is proud of the Blue Devils, but Clemson has made more mistakes, more turnovers, more penalties than typically a Clemson football team makes, and that's been the difference right there. And they may bail themselves out in overtime, but we'll see. First overtime for both of these teams since the overtime came into play last year. Waiting for the coin toss here at midfield. Both teams waiting to send their captains out to see how this thing is going to play out. Well, we've gone four quarters of play and not much to decide from. Clemson got on the scoreboard first, then Duke tied it at three. Then after their field goal, Clemson committed the first of three turnovers that set Duke up for another field goal to take a 6 3 lead and Clemson tied it up with David Richardson's second field goal of the day to make it six all and then on the first play of the ensuing drive after they got the ball back Elon Green hit Brian Wofford for a 50 yard pass play to put it 13 6 but then late in the first half Darius Clark recovered a fumble on a sack and trotted in five yards to tie the score at 13. Nothing doing for most of the third quarter. No scoring in the third as we approach the second ever ACC overtime game. And then Duke moved out in front, advancing into Clemson territory to the 32 on an eight-yard pass reception by Corey Thomas, then tack on a 15-yard penalty that set up Lay Marshall from 17 yards out and on the trap play, the fullback carried 17 yards untouched into the end zone to put Duke ahead. Clemson struck deep but then turned the ball over at the 10 yard line but finally got it back and Tony Horn hauled in a 34 yard touchdown pass from Neilon Green. The point after kick was good. That tied it up with 612 to play at 7 all. Yeah. NC State and Syracuse the other overtime game and that was earlier this season and so the captains meet at midfield that's Raymond Priester. And here's the coin toss who's going to win it. It appears Duke has won the, the toss. And he was tapping. Our communications with the field apparently is out. And Duke will have the football the first time on possession in overtime. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Duke and Clemson are headed for overtime, and Duke has won the coin toss, and they have elected to give Clemson the football first. They're going to go on defense. Here's the rules. The rule changes for the overtime. You have to go for two points after the second overtime if you're still tied. First and 10 at the 25 yard line. Here comes Austin and Austin cracks his way down to the 20. Tackled on the play by Eric Jones. Elon Green has sprung the big play all afternoon. He'll get a chance to see if he can put Clemson on the scoreboard first. Clemson will have a crack at scoring. If they don't, Duke will get a chance to score. If they do, game's over. If Duke scores on a turnover, game over. Those are the rules of the overtime. We used to call it the Kansas City tiebreaker. Second down and five. Here's Neilon Green, the pitch to Austin, but there's nothing doing. Eric Jones again on the tackle, along with Kevin Lewis. Lewis, who played a role in this game earlier, as he sacked Neilon Green, and that sprung the ball loose for Darius Clark to score what was at the time a tying touchdown at 13 late in the first half. Well, you know, Duke's got a lot of confidence in their uh, their defense to give the ball to Clemson, and uh, you can see old Joe, uh, Eric Jones came up and made a big play on the option. Big play here, third down. Third and four, score tied at 20. We're in the first overtime. Elon Green under center, and he's got backs in the eye. The play action. Green going over the middle, and is incomplete. Intended on the play for Brian Wofford, who was right in the middle at the seven-yard line. That brings up fourth down. 
and the field goal unit is on. Let's take a look at it. Green goes back, fakes to Austin, the tailback, goes over the middle. That's Tawambi Settles that was covering Tony Horn. Here's another look at it. Richardson to attempt the field goal. That was for Warford, uh, number 25. This will be a 36-yard kick. 36-yard kick here for Richardson, and it is good. good. So Clemson takes the lead in overtime, 23-20. And now Duke will have the football at the 25-yard line, and they'll take a crack. They must get at least a field goal to keep it going. Let's go to the sidelines and Jim Noble. Steve, interesting story about David Richardson, who just made that kick. Remember last week, he missed two out of three point after touchdowns. All around campus this week, guys were going up to David and calling him Pat. Get it? P-A-T. So he's sort of made amends for that today. Of course, Sims Lenhart for Duke, they're in good hands. He is a semifinalist for the Luke Rosa Award, which goes to the best kicker in the nation. Yep, that man, David Richardson, he might have missed the point after touchdowns, but he's hit a 52-yard field goal, two yards longer than Sims Lenhart. But this is Bobby Campbell out first and 10, first overtime. Here comes the reverse, and Montgomery wanted to throw, and he's sacked for a loss. Raheem Abdullah is there, and sacked Montgomery for a loss, who wanted to throw the football. Well, Montgomery was a quarterback in high school. He fumbles the ball as Campbell pitches it out, but the receiver is not open, and you can see Abdullah making the play. There's the pitch out. Montgomery fumbles it. He can't find the open receiver, and Abdullah, Raheem Abdullah, makes the play. Second down and 19 on a loss of nine. Back to the 34-yard line. Campbell out of the shotgun. Still has his feet and almost had Corey Thomas out of bounds. Third down and 19 coming. Clemson leading 23-20 on David Richardson's field goal from 36 yards out. Well, here's Campbell back in the shotgun. He's looking. There's pressure put on him. Good pressure put on by Dingle. He had Corey Thomas wide open, who had Camp Michael Allen beat, but he threw the ball out of bounds. Coach Goldsmith shaking his head on that. This will be a, they don't get it here. This will be a long field goal attempt by Sims Lenhart. Third down and 19. Ball at the 34. Campbell. Throws as he oh. let go, it's intercepted. Flag on the play, an interception by Raheem Abdullah. He will go all the way and score, but let's see what the flag is back at the line of scrimmage. If the flag is against Duke, this one's over. If it's against Clemson, then this not only could be an important penalty because it will put Duke possibly in field goal range to tie it. That's and it. the crowd is on the field. They think this game is over, but we have to look at the flag. They're trying to shoo the fans off the football field here. This game well, is still alive. It appears that it's against, uh, it's against Duke. If it's against Duke, this game's over. If it's against Clemson. Let's see what the call is going to be because Abdullah scored a touchdown on the play. Holding on the offense. The penalty is refused. The game's over. It's over. Oh. And the Clemson Tigers win it by a score of 23-20. The touchdown does not count by Abdullah, but it is a defensive turnover, and that thus ends the overtime. Well, what caused this was the pressure. There's Campbell back to pass, and as the pressure by big number 91, Lorenzo Brumwell, and Campbell has to throw it, and there's Raheem Abdullah intercepting it. Of course, it's not a touchdown. Well, no, now they say it is. It is a touchdown. They say it is a touchdown, and that ends the overtime because the penalty was against Duke. Clemson declines. The result of the play is a touchdown. In overtime, a defensive touchdown ends the overtime, obviously, and Clemson was up already by three. Well, credit Lorenzo Brumble right there, number 91. Campbell's trying to throw the ball, get it out of there, 
And, of course, Abdullah comes up with a big, big, big play in this ball. 62-yard, 63-yard touchdown run in overtime, and the Clemson Tigers get out by a 29-20 count in overtime. Next Saturday on many of these same stations, more ACC football as Virginia takes on NC State from Raleigh, or you'll see Wake Forest at Florida State at 12 noon. Check your local listings for the game in your area. A wild one today in Clemson, the Tigers win it in overtime, 29-20. For Bill Dooley and Jim Noble and Steve Martin, thanking you for being along with us this afternoon. It was a wild one as the Clemson Tigers keep their bowl